And welcome to the graveyard, St. Mark's and uh, Archmere. A short kickoff here as this is going to be on a delay. We are not live. You're watching this as a recording on YouTube. Nick Allison Journey alongside Craig Laskowski, Jason Mitchell to my left, Mike Lang hanging out on top of the press box operating the camera for this one. And Craig, we've got a good one. St. Mark's, who's ranked third in our Class 2A rankings, taking on Archmere, who's ranked fifth. Archmere, a couple of bad losses here the last two weeks, but they're looking to rebound here with a good week of practice. And St. Mark's, they are 5-0 and and riding high. This is going to be a good one here tonight at the graveyard. Absolutely. This is the definition of Friday Night Lights. we got the defending champs against an undefeated St. Mark's team. I've been excited for this one all week. So St. Mark's going to start with pretty good field position here at around their own 44. They'll go out, out of the gun on first and 10. A tough scoreboard operation for us. The RPO from Patalano, he's going to have his man across the middle and close to first down yardage. And that's Jake O'Donohue who's going to have the first catch and the first first down, I believe, at least for the moment. Now we'll call it second inches, but a good gain nonetheless on first down. That RPO so quick on the first play of the game caught Archmir off guard. Looked like they were playing run, set up in their 4-3 defense. That RPO split the middle perfectly. So that's going to set up second and half a yard for St. Mark's here on the opening drive as they get into Archmere Auk territory. First down marker sitting at around the Archmere 46. Patalano out of the gun will turn and give to the left side. And having some room to run there and picking up some yardage is T.J. Martin, the senior, and a new set of downs here for St. Mark's. He's one of three running backs for St. Mark's that can put up yards for them. They have that traditional three-headed running attack. So when he gets off the field, Archmere's not going to get a break. They got three running backs that will take you out. And we've seen the senior Martin. We may see some Keegan Barnes, Matt Hanish, Donovan Artis, or Artis as well. As you mentioned, Craig, they've got a bunch of different guys that they can hand the ball to here in this Spartan offense. New set of downs for St. Mark's now as they get inside the Archmere 45. Patalano back in the gun. He's got two backs with him. This time he'll drop straight back. Going to look to the left. Firing one-on-one -on -one coverage for Logan Klein down the sideline and just out of his intended target's hands as might have overthrown him just a tad, but definitely gave Klein an opportunity to make that play. Absolutely. You can tell St. Mark's strategy right away. They are pushing the pace. They are going to the air. It's a high-powered attack. That's why they've put up 192 points this year and only given up 50. This is a high-powered offense. St. Mark's attack, and we're going to see it all night long. So second and ten after the incompletion. Patalano once again going to sit back in the shotgun. And now they'll roll him out to the right side. Has his man out to the far sideline and make the catch, and now cut back inside, picking up about eight yards. Made a man miss there. Archmere rode their defense and their fundamentals like tackling to a state championship last year. Haven't been as sound this year. They're definitely going to have to clean some things up if they're going to hang with this St. Mark's team tonight. That one, Bryce Tucci, the tight end, able to pick up seven. Patalano, two for two, 16 yards on the drive, and now third and short, third and manageable now for Patalano and the St. Mark's offense here. We're 9.59 and ticking in the first quarter here on Delaware Live Sports. So first third down opportunity here for the Spartans. As Patalano sits in the gun, Martin standing to his left. Here comes Klein in motion, and now we're going to have some laundry. Flag on the play. First this flag be against St. Mark's. Pardon me, Nick. Small start. Kind of goes against the Spartans. So that'll back him up five. They're going to make this third down a little bit tougher on that Spartan offense. This was the strength of Archmere's defense last year. They got teams off the field on third down. So what was third and about three? And third and two becomes third and seven, third and eight here for St. Mark's. As the first down marker sitting inside the 35 and around the 33. So Patalano with the shotgun, he's got slot to the left. And here comes motion, that'll form trips to the bottom of the screen. He'll have three receivers to choose from. Here comes the pressure, he'll tuck it and try to run, but nowhere to go for Chase Patalano, who's going to be brought down right at the line of scrimmage. 
That time on the sack was number 77 on that Archmere Auk defense. Jack O'Neill getting in there for I believe it was just a one yard gain for St. Mark's, but right on cue, they get St. Mark's into fourth down and get them off the field. And St. Mark's looked like they were putting something together there, but that Archmere defense held. So now we have another whistle down on the field. And it's going to be a timeout, Ox. So we'll stay right here, fourth and around eight. They'll give them maybe a loss of about one on that play, it looks like, out on the field. So fourth and nine upcoming for the Spartans. They did send the punt unit out. We'll see what they decide to do after the timeout. But Padalano on that opening drive. Two of three for 16 yards. Yeah, it might be pedestrian stats, but St. Mark's showed that they're going to push the pace. They're not going to change their game plan. They've done this all year long. They've been a high-scoring, high-powered offense. So here's Luke Decay, the punter for the Spartans. He's averaging around 37 yards a punt this season. Here for St. Mark's, he's standing at his own 45. Who's that for them? And Archmere. Ryan Going to have Hamburger back there to receive as Decay gets this one straight up in the air. That could be dangerous. Going to take a Spartan hop and then going to be fielded inside the 20. So now we get our first look at the defending state champion Archmere Ox and the All-State quarterback Chris Albero. He's a kicker. He can play quarterback. He does it all for this Archmere program. And he's back under center this year. He's, again, had a great start to the year as the team, though, dropping the last two. But you look at some of his stats, 54% completion percentage, 871 yards, 10 touchdowns, also leading the team in carries and rushing with 183 and three scores on the ground. You said it, Nick. This team is going to go as Albero goes. He does everything for this team, rushing, throwing. I'm surprised he doesn't receive the ball <laughs> as well. But he is a jack of all trades for this team, led them to a state title. He's fun to watch. So he'll be out of the gun here on first down as well for Archmere. Motion, they'll turn. Hand it off to Hamburger, trying to get inside. Paoli right there to meet him in the hole. And it'll be a short gain here on first down. As Ryan Hagenberg going to pick up actually about four on the carry. Hagenberg's quick. He's one of those scat back types. He can hide behind his linemen and make those quick moves, quick cuts. He's not going to be that power runner that you traditionally have seen from Archmere in the past. They're a little bit more of a finesse team than they used to be, but... He certainly still gets the job done. So second and six now for Archmere on their opening drive. After forcing the Spartans to punt, this time they'll get Elbero out of the pocket. He's going to take a deep shot, one-on-one -on -one coverage down the sideline, coming back and unable to make the catch near the sideline. It was Drew Duncan. And that time Albero got the one-on-one -on -one coverage he wanted on the outside, took a shot, and that one just out of his hands could have been a big play for the Alts. Much like St. Mark's taking that shot on second down on the first drive, trying to push the pace, trying to push the envelope with their offense here, but one-on-one -on -one coverage, Duncan couldn't come down with it. Good no call there, it was just a 50-50 ball. So third and around six here for the Spartans, I mean, excuse me, for the Alks as Albero back in the shotgun. Slot to the right side, they'll turn, fake the handoff to Hagenberg, has a man across the middle, and that's good for a first down and much more as Albero able to find his man, Brendan Burke, the junior. That was a perfect little seam route right up the middle for Burke. He gets behind the linebackers, dumps it right in between them, makes his way through the defense for about a 15-yard gain there. So a new set of downs for Archmere after the completion to Duncan. We'll call it 17 and they'll go back out of the gun, slot to the right. Once more for Albero. Hangenberg in the slot, straight drop back, he'll fire. Looking for, again, his intended target. Drew Duncan, who we also had down the sideline, so unable to connect with Duncan on the last two targets. Yeah, Duncan's a 
He's a tall receiver, so you can tell Albero is trying to get the ball up to him so he can go above the defense, play above the rim, if you will. But that time, a little too fired up, put a little too much on it. Even a tall receiver wasn't going to pull that one down. Second and 10 now from the Archmere 48, 657 here remaining in quarter number one. Here comes motion, it's Monger. They'll turn and pitch it to him. Now he'll have some blockers in front, but not for long. As setting the edge and coming up and making the play for St. Mark's was Matt Hannock. And now third and long upcoming for Archmere. Archmere tried to set the edge there and get Monger out to the edge and around the corner, but St. Mark's did a great job of blowing that up in the backfield, not letting it go anywhere. So that'll be good for a loss of one on the carry. And now third and long for the Archmere offense. They'll go trips to the top of the screen. Albero once again back in the gun. Here's the snap. He'll get out of the pocket, rolling to the left. Looking for somewhere to go. Fires across the middle. Has his man. That's going to be good for about eight. Short of first down yardage. That's Monger across the middle. And now a decision time for Coach John Belace now with fourth and around four, and it looks as if, though, he'll be sending the punt unit out onto the field. Yeah, he didn't waste much time sending the punt unit out there. I, I mean, that, that's a tough play for Albero. It was designed as a rollout to the left, but rolling a right-handed quarterback out left is always tough. It limits his options. Throws are always less than accurate, but came up with a decent play there. Number 11, Jew Campbell, set back to receive for the Spartans. So this should be Cole Finise back to punt for Archmere. And it is the junior, and he'll get this one away. He's got a great leg. Fair catch called. Fair catch called at around the 16-yard line for St. Mark. So that's where they'll begin drive number two. But Cole Finise averaging 32 yards a punt. That was a good one there as well. So here comes Chase Patalano and the St. Mark's offense as they'll get back out on the field here with the first quarter with around 523 remaining. Yeah, Coach Blaze has a lot of confidence in his punter, so he does not mind putting him out there on fourth down. He sees them as a weapon, kind of put St. Mark's back inside their 20, play the field position game. So first and 10 for St. Mark's deep in their own territory. Here's the snap, Padalano will turn and hand off. It's Artis this time, breaks a tackle. Able to pick up around five on first down. Ooh, he was a shoestring tackle away from being up that sideline for at least another 20, 25, maybe even house that one. So officially six for Donovan Artis on his first carry of the game. We've seen TJ Martin now and Artis with his first carry. And again, what a crowd we have here tonight at St. Mark's High School. This is what you live for. This is perfect. Friday night lights, Delaware high school football right here. Beautiful night for it here in Wilmington as Padalano back in the gun on second and four. Motion to the right. Turn and give and just lost his footing that time in the backfield. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage was Artis. And now a third down upcoming for the Spartans. Yeah, you know, it rained for about five days straight here in Delaware. So it might have been dry the last two days, but... That does not mean that these field conditions are perfect. There's definitely still going to be some moisture out there. So we'll call it third and four with that first down marker sitting just inside the 30. St. Mark's trips to the left. Bottom of the screen, one-on-one -on -one coverage to the top. Panelano in the shotgun. He'll take the snap. Going to look to the trip side. Here comes the pressure. Going to try to get rid of it late as he went to the ground. I don't know if we heard a whistle, if they're going to mark it incomplete, or if he was he was out of the pocket, I believe, from where we're yeah, sitting, sitting up here in the press box. But there is a flag down on the field. Might be grounding. And, and again, that's what it would have to be, potentially, as he, Patalano, was going to go down as he was running, trying to get out of the pocket and just kind of chucked it forward. That's see, that, that is the call there. Grounding will be the call. And that'll lose it down to a big loss that time for the Spartan offense. And now not only will we see the punt unit, but they're going to be pinned deep, deep in their own territory. And 
Now it's looking as Luke Decay is going to have his heels in the back of the end zone. When Coach Belay sent out the punter on that fourth and short, this is exactly what he had in mind. Hope his defense could push him back, get a three and out, and then maybe get the ball right back where they were anyway. So looks like that game plan worked, at least for now. Playing the field position battle. Decay gets this one off cleanly out of the end zone. Going to take a hop at the 35, and now an Archmere roll inside the 34 to the 33. And now the off's going to be set up in good field position. That punt good for a net of around 23 yards. It really couldn't have worked out better for Archmere after that fourth and short. You think there's a big decision there? Nope. They take the punt. Their defense holds, pushes them back even further into their own territory. And now Archmere's got the ball in St. Mark's territory driving. So let's see what the offs can do on drive number two here in quarter number one, 331 remaining here in the first. They'll empty it out here for Albero on first and 10. Here comes motion. You can tell that field a little slippery. That was Gavin Lee. They'll give it to him, and he is wrapped up and taken down. A tackle for a loss over there. I believe that was Matt Hannock, and yes, it was. The linebacker going sideline to sideline here early in this one. We're seeing field conditions play a part already. He, he slipped while he was in motion, then almost slipped again when he got the ball, and then didn't really have much space there, and St. Mark's blew that up in the backfield. That's going to be loss of about six on the carry. So second and 16 for Archmere. And once again, they'll empty it out for 16. Now Barrow in the gun, two receivers to the bottom. Tight end at the line of scrimmage, and he'll take off. Albero getting out of the pocket, going to loft it up, has his man who jumps up, makes the catch. That's number 44, Kieran Udovic. And if you remember Connor Udovich last year, he was quite the receiver. Kieran right there going to haul that one out of the air and take it for first down yardage. And that is what Albiro is so good at. It's how he's so dangerous. The linebacker stepped up because he thought Albiro was going to run with that, and he just pops it, lollipops it right over the top of the, the linebacker. Easy first down. Beautiful play by Archmere. Well, forgive me, Craig. We are a yard short as that one was good for 15, not oh. the 16 they needed. So it's going to be third and one and could be two down territory here for the Archmere offense as Albero once again back in the shotgun. He's got one receiver wide to the left. Hagenberg in the backfield. It's going to be quarterback power right up the gut. And it's going to be close, really close, as Albero tries to propel himself forward. And we may have a measurement here, Craig. It's going to be really close here coming up. The uh, Jason Winchell pizza measurement, if you will. <laughs> But I don't know. It looked like he made it. But then again, the last play looked like he made it, too. It's got no a, gain on the play. No gain. So a difficult Brings angle from here. You can't really tell. Fourth and one for the Archmere Hawks after the no gain on the quarterback power from Chris Albero. Again, he leads the team in carries and in rushing. And now here we go. It's definitely four down territory. Going against a team like St. Mark's, you got to take this chance. Albero out of the shotgun on fourth and inches. Hagenberg the back, the other Hagenberg in motion. They'll turn, hand it to him. He's got a hole, and he's going to have the first down plus a few more. And that's going to be good for a gain of about six. On the carry that time was Ryan Hagenberg, the freshman, who came in motion and got the carry. Beautiful play call there. And again, you don't know if Albiro or the running back is going to run there. So it's that dual threat that St. Mark's has to look out for. In that case, got the first down. But so far, this, is, this has been a great matchup of offense against defense on both sides. First and 10 for Archmere. Just outside the red zone, sitting right at the 20. As Albero sits in the shotgun, he'll fake the handoff. Now he's going to try to make something happen. Here comes the pressure. Out of the pocket goes Albero down the sideline. He'll take off now, and he's going to just tow the sideline. He might have got in the end zone. No signal from the officials down on the field. They're going to talk about it, maybe mark him out around the one. Wow. Or no, they're he's going to call in. it a touchdown. What a magical play by Chris Albero. It looks it was a broken play. He almost is sacked in the backfield. He rolls out left, tiptoes down the sideline, 
and makes it right inside the pylon. I, I thought he was out, but man, he just, he's just, he's so sneaky with how he can get inside that pylon. Man, what a play. And don't go anywhere, Chris Albero. Stay out on the field because you're going to have to kick the extra point as well. Such a phenomenal overall football player and athlete is Chris Albero. Again, taking that one for 20 yards down the sideline, towing that sideline as he was able to get in the end zone for the first touchdown, the first points of the night tonight. And now he'll try to tap on the PAT. Kick is up. And it is good. Albero the touchdown. Albero the extra point. And with nine seconds remaining here in quarter number one, the Archmere Hawks take a seven to nothing lead over the Spartans here at the graveyard. That was an impressive drive by Archmere there. It looked a few times like they had that St. Mark's had him in the backfield, but Albiro, with his ability to extend plays, keeps that one alive and scores the touchdown. That's how Archmere's offense is so dangerous. Chris Albero from just outside the red zone, right at the 20 yard line, adding to his rushing totals on the season. 183 yards for three touchdowns, make it 200 with four for number 16 in white tonight. And now we'll see if the Spartan offense can respond here at home as we should have enough room for maybe a play here left in the first quarter with nine seconds on the clock. My guess would be St. Mark's is going to come out firing on this drive. They're going to want to make a point. They're not going to go down very easily. This is a high-powered offense, as we've stated a few times, and this is going to be a long night for Archmere. This one scooped off the ground. They're going to be picked up at around the 30. And leaning forward for a few extra yards that time. For St. Mark's was TJ Martin. TJ Martin picks up the ball for the Spartans. And they'll begin this drive at the 35. So St. Mark's not used to really trailing a lot here in the football season. They've outscored opponents 192 to 40 through five games here in 2022. Almost a four to one outscoring of their opponents. Shows how great they are on offense as well as defense. This isn't a situation that they've been in a lot. Be interesting to see how they respond. So offense to begin this one from the 33. Trips to the bottom of the screen. Paoli in motion. He'll sit in the backfield with Patalano, now he'll get the handoff, trying to bounce it to the outside. And he'll get a few Number on one, first down is Mass Paoli. Gain of three yards at the quarter end. So good enough for three, and that will be, as predicted, the last play of quarter. Number one, when we come back, we're heading to the second here at the graveyard. St. Mark's and Archmere as the Hawks leading the Spartans seven to nothing after one. First State Orthopedic Statewide has 29 physicians at 16 locations. Our physicians and staff provide both non-surgical as well as surgical treatment for almost all orthopedic conditions and injuries. We are specially trained in the current state-of-the-art techniques. We serve as team physician and orthopedic consultant for over 20 high schools, Wilmington University, and many local recreational and competitive leagues. Our doctors are readily available to the local emergency departments as well as medical aid units and urgent care centers for consultation and treatment. Call for an appointment today or visit us at firststateortho.com. And welcome back inside Delaware Live Sports. Nick Alessandrini alongside Craig Laskowski, Jason Winchell and Mike Lang. Again, we are going to be having this one for you late, a recording not live, unfortunately, some internet issues here at St. Mark's High School. That's why they call it the graveyard. A exactly right, because you got no signal here, that's for sure. Second and seven. The internet has certainly gone here to die. <laughs> Second and seven for the Spartans after the three yard carry by Paoli on first down. Motion now, and gonna reset on the other side, and now some movement up front, and that's gonna be a false start. Getting an early step that time was Peter Larang. Play, and that'll back Spartans. up the Spartans five yards. Early game jitters here with St. Mark's. They've had a few of these false starts now. I think that's the second one. Second See if they can settle down and look like second the St. Mark's team that we've seen dominate this entire year. 
Second and 12 now for the Spartans. And again, open up the season with that last minute scheduled game against Apoquinimic. They get that win over a Class 3A program. So a challenge in overtime against Newark. They squeak that one out. And then some big wins as well. Has them at 5-0. and oh. Second and 12 now for Patalano. As he'll turn, fake to Martin. He'll look to throw. Going to fire. Here's the arc down the sideline for Logan Klein. But that one going to sail out of play. And that time they had Klein run the under, and the, excuse me, the out and up to the sideline. Looking for the double move there. And that one just out of his reach again. Bit of a missed opportunity. They had him. He was looking over the wrong shoulder. It went it to his outside shoulder. He was looking inside. If that ball's inside, he might have a big play there. St. Mars getting some one-on-one -on -one coverage here on the back end. That time went with the play action and the shot deep. A few shots deep here taken by Patalano in the first half. And like we said, both have been 50-50 balls and man coverage. Slot to the left now for Patalano. Lone receiver to the bottom of the screen on second and 12, or excuse me, third and 12. Paoli will go back and set in the backfield. Now they'll set up the screen, looking for Martin, unable to catch it. Is that one, again, just a little bit out Came off weird out of the hands of Patalano, and TJ Martin wasn't able to haul it in. Yeah, a bit of a difficult pass. Even if he hauls that in, he probably doesn't have much room on the sideline there. Archmere had it pretty well covered. Two or five now for 16 yards for the junior Chase Patalano. Now we'll see Luke Decay and the punt unit for punt number three. They look to improve upon the last one. A 23 yard punt last time around, averaging around 33 a kick for Luke Decay. And again, heels at the 30 for Archmere. It's Justin Hagenberg. Archmere leading 7 to nothing as we just begin quarter number two. This one's a high one. Hagenberg going to come over, let it take a hop, and he'll field it at the 30, and he is blasted right there. What a play by number 33, Taz Johnson. Johnson was all over that. He made his way down the field in a hurry. I took an awkward hop, and man, he was just set up for the take in there, and Hagenberg took a big hit on that one. Yeah, sometimes punt returning can be a tough job. I <laughs> Shout out to Joey Cochran. If, if you go back and you hear this, was our punt returner, and he took some big hits, and one of them was from Andre Patton. And we have that tape if somebody can find it. <laughs> one of the best hits I've ever seen. Joey though getting right up, no fumble, held on to the ball, and that's all you can ask for is Hagenberg able to hold on to the ball that time, and Archmere offense gonna head back out onto the field. Absolutely, held on to the ball, gives his team a chance at a fresh set of downs here. See if Archmere can extend this early lead that they have over the 5-0 St. Mark's Spartans. And now we have the official, I believe, a flag against Archmere. Flag on the play was holding on Archmere. So that's going to be a hold against the Hawks. That's going to back him up 10. So from the 30, should back him up to at least the 20. We'll get the official measurements here. So that's where they'll begin the drive at their own 20 here in quarter number two, 11.36. Chris Albero, a nice start, 3 of 5, 40 yards. A carry for 20 and a score in the first quarter. Yeah, certainly a great first quarter for Chris Albero. He's going to try to expound upon that performance and lead his team. Slot to the left. The receiver out to the far side is Monger as Albero's in the shotgun. Hagenberg in motion. He'll take the snap. Delayed handoff inside and nowhere running on first down. That time the ball in the hands. Number five, of Justin number Hagenberg. five, Justin Hagenberg. You'll see a lot of number five, Here's Justin up, Hagenberg, as well as number 25, six, eight, Ryan nine, Hagenberg. Nine. Justin, the senior, Ryan, the freshman. And a gain eight, of eight, two eight. that time for the senior. The fine tradition of siblings on the Archmere football team, much like the Udovich brothers. That's right, last year. Kieran and Connor last year. Now Hagenbergs take on that tradition this year. So second and eight here for the Ox. Albero in the gun. Monger in deep motion. He'll turn, fake the handoff. He'll look to throw. Here comes the pressure, has to get rid of it. And sails it over the head of Monger, and that'll set up third and eight for the Ox. Yeah, great pressure from the backside there by St. Mark's. 
hurries Albero to the right. He had to hurry that throw. Awkward motion as well. Great, great pressure by St. Mark's to force that. So third and long for Archmere, and we'll see what Coach Belace and company draw up here. 10.42 remaining in quarter number two here at the graveyard. Double slot for Albero on third and long. Crowd getting into it here in front of us. It's a straight boot they're going to run. Looks like a speed option to the right side. Albero going to keep it and in whole high step and toe the sideline once more, and he has enough for first down yardage. Perfect play call there by Coach Belace. That dead speed option out to the right. He had the option to pitch there, but he had enough room, made his way right to the first down marker. He's just so quick. I'd be, uh, I'd be surprised if he ever needed to make that pitch. Albero, again, one of the most talented uh, skilled players here in the state of Delaware. Means so much to this Archmere program. And again, brought them an undefeated state championship last year. It's a lot of talent, a lot of guys that contributed to that team. And again, trying to find the magic here as they defend the state championship. First and 10 at around the 32 now. Motion for Hagenberg. They'll once again get Albero out of the pocket. He'll square up, fire across the middle, and he's got a man at the 45. Making that catch number 12. That's Gavin Lee, the junior, one of the leading receivers this year for Archmere. But there is a flag down at the line of scrimmage, and they're going to walk this one back, Craig. A holding against Archmere is going to bring back a huge play for the Alks. What a shame. A big gainer over the middle there on the deep slant in. Looks like they got the offensive line on a hold there. That is a big mistake. Archmere's Gavin Lee again having a great year offensively for Archmere. Seven catches, 158 yards, and three touchdowns. Averaging 22 and a half yards of reception. He's a deep play threat. You saw it on that play. But the penalty against Archmere will negate it. So that'll back him up to the 16, and again, holding as a spot foul here in high school. And that's going to be first and a mile now for Albero in the Archmere offense. Trips to the top as he'll take the snap. Once again, they'll fake the handoff. Fire out, has his man near the sideline. Who's able to make a defender miss that time. That's Drew Duncan, and he's going to act like he never went out of bounds. He's going to keep running. But they're going to mark him out after a gain of about 15. By number 33, Johnson. Way to make a few people miss there and get some extra yards. Probably got an extra six yards after Seven making that first 12, guy miss. So a good game that time there for Albero and Duncan. Picking up some of that penalty yardage back, making it second in around 12. First down at around the Archmere 42. Albero in the gun, double slot formation for Archmere. Monger in motion, trips to the top. Look for him in the flat, here comes the pressure. Watson trying to chase him down. Albero using the speed, gets to the sideline. And he'll be able to make something out of nothing. That time was Chris Albero, and he'll be, be able to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Flag. And once again, some laundry on the field, so hold it all for now. Very late flag, too, that came after Albero was, Al Albero was out of bounds. St. Mark's pointing Archmere's way. And now a discussion on the far sideline. And now we'll await the call. It's like Archmere's walking back. So penalties have been killer for Archmere here. They picked up one on the punt and picked up a few on this drive alone. They've probably ran about five plays and had penalties on three of them. Looks like they're calling a... Looks like they're calling a uh, intentional grounding. So Albero ran to the sideline and then threw the ball, I believe, I guess, is what happened there. To be quite honest, I was unaware you couldn't do that. He was, I guess, I mean, to the far sideline, must have been no one. I'm mean, hard to believe with a boot to the right that there was no one over there. 
or maybe the ball didn't get back to the line, to of, the scrimmage. line of scrimmage. So again, we didn't have a good view of it. Yeah. So third, he just chucked it. That's going to be third and twenty for Archmere. Double slot. They'll throw the screen out wide. Get it in the hands of Drew Duncan. And Duncan will pick up around eight. And that's not going to be enough. But now the punt unit will come back out onto the field. Yeah, penalties definitely doom that drive for the Hawks. They made a uh, quite an effort to get back to that first down yardage, but they were way behind the sticks. It's a hard way to play offense. So Cole Finese back out to punt for Archmere. The Hawks leading 7 0 over St. Mark's. Nine minutes and ticking here in half number one. That one, though, straight up in the air. And it's going to hop right up at the 44. And now, like Archmere had when they was able to score their touchdown, great field position now coming this time for the Spartans. Exactly, Nick. That ball looked like uh, it's kind of doomed from the start with a bad high snap and then off the side of his foot. See if Archmere's defense can step up here. But St. Mark's has a golden opportunity to tie this game with this field position. And again, great weather here tonight. We've seen some people slip and, and different miscues. But we, it's a perfect night for football. No rain, it's dry. Oh, absolutely. This is a beautiful temperature. Night. I think around 64 degrees now. Perfect night for football. So here come the Spartan offense looking for their first points here tonight. They'll go Patalana, or is this a Wildcat? It's TJ Martin at shotgun. In the Wildcat for the Spartans. He'll fake the handoff, follow his lead blockers, lower the shoulder, and dive forward. And Looks the like ball, that ball came, came out, out at the end. Was Martin down? Are they going to mark him down? They do. And he'll pick up three on the Wildcat carry. Does TJ Martin, his second carry of the night. Nice little wrinkle that St. Mark's has thrown in. It's the first time we've seen the Wildcat tonight. Archmere ready for it that time. And again, Archmere coming off two tough losses. A 38-34 loss to Howard, who has been spectacular this year. And then a tough one against Friends. Turnovers have been killer for the Hawks in the last few. Martin in the gun. Once again, out of the Wildcat, he's going to look. Same play, they'll just flip it to the left side. And he'll pick up around three more. So two back-to-back -back carries, or a carry back-to-back -back for Martin, picking up three, and then and about three again. So third and manageable upcoming. St. Mark's might have something here. Archmere's definitely going to have to adjust to the Wildcat wrinkle that they're throwing in here, but... It looks they, like they're going to stick with it here as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that they're thinking maybe this is a throw Archmere off a little bit. So once again, it's Martin in the backfield. He'll follow the blockers off the snap. It's going to be close, but he didn't get there. Fourth and about one. He picked up three yards a pop on those three plays. Good for nine. And now fourth and one upcoming for the Spartans at the Archmere 36. They're reeling off about three yards a pop. I mean, that, bet you, that puts you right at fourth and short. I mean, you might have to go for it on fourth down here. And they've had success. Why not run the same play? Same formation. Fourth and one upcoming. Seven minutes to go in half number one. And Archmere seven to nothing lead. Martin in the Wildcat, they need a yard. Motion, he'll fake it, gonna try to get forward, he does, and he's gonna have enough for first down yardage, and he's gonna stay on his feet and shed a few more ox on his way to a gain of about seven. Yep, bread and butter right there. Why go away from it when it's working? They're getting three, four yards a clip, they can matriculate their way down the field. So new set of downs for the Spartans, now inside the Archmere 30. First and 10 from the 29. And then a whistle, and we're going to have a timeout on the field. It's going to be Archmere's second timeout. They'll have one remaining, and the clock will stop with 6.25 to go in quarter number two. Archmere leading St. Mark's 7 to nothing. Thanks for joining us, Nick Allison Drini, alongside Craig Laskowski, Jason Winchell, and Mike Lang. We've got number three St. Mark's against number five Archmere. 
and the one that, Craig, you had, we all had circled on our calendars when we sat down and looked at the schedule before the season started. Absolutely, and you know, certainly you and I have absolutely no personal rooting interest no, in this whatsoever. No Archmere you know, St. Mark's comes grads with, Comes here. with the job, right? You gotta remain unbiased, you know, so. Absolutely, <laughs> but more than anything, these are just two great teams playing great football. Archmere coming off two huge losses. They were crushing losses for Archmere. And St. Mark's rolling right now. So these are two teams going in opposite directions, but two teams that are definitely on equal footing, usually, at least should be, in the Delaware High School football rankings. So out of the Archmere timeout, first and 10 for St. Mark's. At the Spartan 29. So now Padalano back out on the field. Hannick in motion. They'll snap it to him in the shotgun. He'll turn in hand to Keegan Barnes, who has a hole. He's going to bounce it outside to the 10, 5, and into the end zone. Touchdown, St. Mark's. A 29-yard carry for Keegan Barnes, his first of the night, and it goes for six. What a run. He bounces it outside perfectly. After four straight Wildcat runs up the middle, they bounce a run on the outside. I don't think Archmere was ready for it. Perfect play call, perfect blocking. Makes his way right to the end zone fairly easily, almost untouched. What speed out of the junior, Keegan Barnes. Got through the hole, got to the sideline, and into the end zone for the first touchdown for St. Mark's here tonight. Extra point, the hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. Seven to seven here in the second quarter. 6.15 remaining, it's your first state orthopedics game of the week here at the graveyard, and Craig, we are all tied up at seven here in quarter number two. This is pretty much where we thought we'd be, a close, tight game with both of these teams trying to put on a show here for us. I tell you what, I'm certainly entertained. It is a good start here at the graveyard. What a crowd here at St. Mark's High School. So much going on with the Spartans these last few years. Enrollment's been up. Some big stuff is on the way as well. And then you look over at Archmere coming off an undefeated state championship season last season. Both of these programs on the rise and we get the luxury of having them here in front of us tonight. Absolutely, Archmere graduated some big names. I mean, yeah, Johnny Kim, Connor Udovich, Declan Pearson, basically some of yeah. the biggest names that gave them that state title. And now they're back this year with a pretty good team trying to get back in the win column. So this is, uh, this is gonna be a good one, 7-7. Seven, seven. And the Phillies, how about the Phillies tonight? A yes, huge win. Sir. Six to three on the road in St. Louis for game number one. Game two tomorrow, 837. As that one is a loose ball on the kickoff and just able to hop on it at the last minute was Monger. And as we were talking to Jason before the game, kickoffs have not been good for the Archbear Ox this season. Got multiple fumbles on kickoffs this year, and at that time, the kickoff unit, once again, not having the best showing on that play. Yeah, uh, special teams right now, not Archmere's friend. It's backed them up a few times, and now starting well inside their own 20 on this drive. So Archmere Hawk offense come back onto the field. Seven to seven ball game here at St. Mark's. Thank you, ladies, for joining our 613 remaining in half number one. Monger in deep motion. They'll turn and pitch it to him. He'll have a blocker to follow, but nowhere to run as he's going to be pushed out of the sideline there. Play made over on the far sideline by number 41, Jack O'Donohue. Right now, St. Mark's defense is running sideline to sideline really well. There's not a lot of room out there for Archmere to get around the edge. Alvaro's done it a few times, but outside of that, St. Mark's has cut off that edge. Archmere's gonna have to find another way up the field. Loss of two on the carry from Monger. And he's got two carries for negative three yards. They did a good job bottling him up here early. So second and 12 for Alvaro. Two receivers out to the left. He'll drop back and look to throw. Here comes the pressure, able to stay up for about a second, but not much longer. A host of Spartans there in the backfield, and that's gonna be a sack on second down. Albero was lucky to get 
few yards out of the goal line there. He was in the shadow of his own goal post, literally. And now they are way backed up. And St. Mark's defense is swarming right now, not giving Archmere much of anything to work with on the ground or in the air. Third and 20 coming up for the Archmere offense. Watson has been chasing Albero around all night. That time he got to him. O'Donoghue right there as well. Albero will get the play call from the far sideline. 5-11 and ticking as they break the huddle deep into their own territory. Ball at their own five-yard line. First down at around the 23. They'll need 18 on third. Motion. He'll try to reverse hand off the backside to Hagenberg. And he'll be dropped after a gain of about eight. And that was the old play we saw from Johnny Kim last year that was so successful. And we even saw it in the state championship game, a big carry for a touchdown. This time it's Hagenberg. Yeah, it's that same carry. They took him about 80 yards into the end zone over there at Tubby Raymond Field. But I'll tell you what, this St. Mark's defense is incredibly impressive right now. And Archmere's going to really have to change their game plan if they're going to make any headway. Here's Cole Finese, Mass Paoli, and Jude Campbell back to receive for the Spartans. They've got heels at the 45. Finese going to have to bunt it deep in his own territory. It's a decent one. Back going to be fair caught inside the 50 by Campbell. McCall at the 46. So here comes the Spartans offense back out and now a chance to take the lead here after the defense does their job. Yeah, that was about as uh, great of a result as you could have expected on that punt for Archmere. At least got to the opposite side of the field and now St. Mark's takes over around the 46 yard line with an opportunity to take their first lead of the game. Big opportunity here for the Spartans. Don't huddle up with coach Joey right there on the near sideline as they break the huddle. Klein and Campbell, the receivers out to the right side. And O'Donoghue, the tight end on the left. And now we'll see Padalano under center. One of the first times we've seen that tonight. For St. Mark's on first and 10. TJ Martin, the tailback, they'll quick toss it to him straight up the gut. And he is going to carry some Archmere Aux forward. And I'll tell you one thing, TJ Martin, yards after contact going up here so far in this one. Very strong back as well as quick. And I'll tell you what, him running up the middle right now is just working perfectly for them. Why would you go away from it until Archmere stops that run up the middle? I don't see why St. Mark's wouldn't just keep running it with him. Second and three. Second and three. After the gain from Martin on first down. Now back in the shotgun. Goes Panelano. Martin to his right. O'Donoghue in motion. He'll reset on the right side. Quick give now once again to Martin. He's got a hole in front of him. He'll leap over a defender. And deeper into Archmere territory he goes. Taken down at the 32. That's going to be good enough for a gain of 16 for the senior. Up, Archmere not showing the ability to stop him, so they're going to keep feeding him the ball. He'll make his way all the way down to the end zone at this rate. Seven carries, 43 yards for T.J. Martin, and that's including a few of them out of the Wildcat we saw in the previous possession. First and 10 now for the Spartans. Padalano back in the shotgun. Deep motion for T.J. Martin, and he'll turn and get it once more here. Has a defender to miss, and he makes him miss. A nice jump cut inside that time for TJ Martin. And he's able to pick up close to four or five once again there on first down. And you'll take that chunk on first down. Absolutely. Similar to what we saw on the last drive. Up the middle for three or four plays, then bounce it outside with a little change of pace and change of direction. Catch Archmere off guard. This Archmere defense is certainly on its heels right now. I'll tell you what, these cheerleaders are incredible. They are very Impressive. I think there's a collaboration going. I think I see some St. John the Beloved Eagles with the Spartans. I, maybe it's, uh, it's you know, I think it's St. John's down there as well. So some double wow. duty for the cheerleaders down on the side. They are as high have, flying. As they go back to TJ Martin. They'll pick up one that time. So now third and five, a manageable third and five here for the Spartans. Keegan Martin is it again. 
Keegan Barnes back at running back. We saw what he did the last time he touched the football. Right at around the same spot that the Spartans have it here. Third and five. Patalano under center, eye formation. They'll turn, toss it to Keegan Barnes. A nice pull for him to work with. And he speeds right through the hole and picks up first down yardage. Give him seven. First down. It's offensive line for the Spartans really making room for the running backs to run. Tell you what, this is this has been a very impressive last two drives. Looks like a different team than we saw in the first quarter. 110 and ticking here in the first half. Spartans once again will go out of the I formation from the 20. They'll tip pitch it to Keegan Barnes. He's going to be hit in the backfield and held on to. Not yet going down though is number 17. But that time Archmere able to corral him after a very short game. And a timeout, Spartans. Timeout. I'll stop the clock here with 55 seconds remaining here in half number one. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget our snack bar is open at the half. Plenty of treats down there in this cool October night. 55 seconds left in the half. Remains 7-7 seven, seven here in the graveyard. So second and eight upcoming for the Spartans is now again after the defense forces a punt deep into their own territory. Set St. Mark's up with some fantastic field position and they'll see if they can take advantage of it as they did last time around. Looking to get some points on the board, take their first lead of the game right before the half. Archmere does have a timeout left. I believe St. Mark's has two remaining. So I believe that's the first of the half for the Spartans and Again, that ball is sitting at around the inside the 20 and around the 17 right now. So they'll have 55 seconds to work with in a 7-7 ball game here for St. Mark's. Padalano in the shotgun. They'll fake the handoff. He'll look to throw. Fires. Has his man across the middle. It's O'Donohue. Can't break a tackle, but we'll be able to get inside the 10. And close to the five-yard line is that's O'Donohue making plays on defense, now doing it here on offense. Yeah, I think Archmere was caught off guard with a pass after such a successful run game from St. Mark's. Gain of 10. Padalano now will turn. Now we have some flags flying as St. Mark's tried to keep it up tempo with 39 seconds. Clock was winding, and St. Mark's didn't get set and came off the ball a little bit early. That's going to be a false start against the Spartans. Unfortunate mistake there for St. Mark's who have been moving forward quite consistently on these last two drives. We haven't really seen them go backwards. So timeout now down on the field. I believe the Spartans will call that one. That'll stop the clock at 39 seconds. Each team has one timeout remaining, but plenty of time here for the Spartans who have the ball, I believe inside close to the Five yard line, or it'll be inside the 10 yard line. So at the 10. So plenty of time. Clock maybe not an issue if you're the Spartans here. You got to go 10 yards in 35 seconds. Yeah, certainly more than enough time for St. Mark's. As long as they play their cards right here, they should have the entire playbook open to them. And that is certainly a big playbook. So we got a nice crew up here in the press box at the graveyard. We're loaded up here. Everybody checking out some fantastic football. So here we go. First and goal from the 10 for the Spartans with 39 to go in half number one. Padalano will roll out out of the gun. Looking for somewhere to go. Now he'll tuck it and try to run. He's going to be hit hard by Kieran Udovich. And the clock will continue to run. That's going to be good for no gain. 27 seconds and ticking. And now we'll have a timeout from the Spartans. That'll be their last. You know, you could think maybe taking the sack there is not the way you want to go. Maybe throw that out of the end zone. But it's a safe play just to live to play another down when you have a chance to take the lead here, whether it's a touchdown or a field goal. You definitely don't want to turn over there. So even if it's... No net gain there, I think that's the right play. So we'll see if they, I mean, I almost, that was the last time I'm out, you got 26 seconds, almost have to put it in the air here if you were St. Mark's. And 
You got to go 10 yards. A lot of their success has been on the ground so far here in the first half. As TJ Martin has nine carries for 49 yards. Keegan Barnes, two carries for 36. And they're coming in averaging 148 rushing yards a game are the Spartans. They've had success with that tight end outside slant that kind of sends him towards, in this case, it would be right towards the pylon. I think we might want to look out for that one here. And now Archmere going to get a look, I believe, at what St. Mark's was lining up in, and now they'll take a timeout. So St. Mark's had the trips to the left with Logan Klein, Maspaoli, and Taj Johnson. Campbell was the lone receiver spread out to the bottom of the screen, but a timeout by Archmere will give both teams a little time to think about the next play here. 26 seconds to go in half number one, a seven to seven ball game between St. Mark's and Archmere, two teams ranked in the top five of our class 2A rankings. Let's hear it for our nationally ranked student section. And the students are out in full force. It is a great time to be a Spartan. Here tonight. Archmere, a nice crowd across the way as well on the visitor's side. You know, sometimes when you go to, to a home game here at St. Mark's, you don't see the other side as packed as, as you might. And Archmere bringing out the fans as well. And that's, both of these programs have great followings. I've had great recent success. And here we go. Second and 10, Padalano trips to the left. He'll fire, one-on-one, -on -one. covers to the end zone. Campbell, touchdown, St. Mark's. As the first half winds down, 19 seconds to go. A 10-yard strike from Padalano to Jude Campbell. Absolutely perfectly placed ball. Great route. I mean, all the way around, that was a great play call. But a great route. He goes right to the pylon, and a perfectly thrown ball to the outside. Gets that touchdown for St. Mark's. Very impressive play call. Jude Campbell, the 11-yard touchdown catch for the Spartans. The sophomore wide receiver, and the Spartans have some weapons. Padalano, four of seven, 39 yards, and a touchdown. And a big one there to end the first half, but you shouldn't say that yet. Still 19 seconds remaining. But the kick is up and through, and the Spartans now looking at a 14 to seven lead and are set to kick off. It has been all St. Mark's ever since Archmere scored that first touchdown. They've got nothing going on offense. St. Mark's defense has been swarming. They've looked like a different team in this second quarter. It'll be interesting to see how both these teams come out of the locker room in the third. Second half adjustments. We'll see what Coach Belace and Coach Joey Wright draw up and, and focus on in the locker room. But, and here we go again, but 19 seconds still remaining and Archmere has had their woes on the kicking team. So they will kick it off here, will the Spartans. Up. It's going to be a squib kick with 19 seconds. It's going to roll into the hands of number 19 for Archmere. And that is Philip Blessington, the junior. He'll be brought down at the 35. So 12 seconds for the Hawks to work with here, left in half number one, trailing 14 to 7. What do you think, Craig? Do they take a shot here, or would they run the ball here and go to the locker room? I'd be surprised if they took any risks here. I think they're going to try to go into the locker room. 14-7. Decent first half showing here. The defense played well. Probably just going to take a knee. So Albert will be under center, and if you see him under center, he might take a knee, and he does so right there and that'll bring us to the close of half number one here at the graveyard what a game we have this week on Delaware Live Sports the Spartans score 14 unanswered they lead 14 to 7 as we head into the locker room Craig what's it out to you in half number one I think just the adjustments St. Mark's made going into that second quarter they looked they looked a little lost in that first quarter tried to almost like they had to get their feet under them. But once they got going, their offense, their defense has looked fantastic. They've looked like the superior team on both sides of the ball in that second quarter. 
Well, that'll do it for the first half here from the graveyard. St. Mark's leading Archmere 14 to seven. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back, I'll be joined by Rob DeMacy, and he's going to talk to us a little about St. Mark's High School and all the great things they've got going on over here in Wilmington. So when we come back, I'll be joined by Rob. And at the half, 14 to seven, St. Mark's leading Archmere. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to, it was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Expectation. And five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 2239-4822. Hi, I'm Scott Cammer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the Villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lewis in the Villages of Five Points, open seven days a week, best happy hour around. See you soon. Hi, I'm Scott. St. Mark's High School. Uh, this is my fourth year back at the alma mater here, serving as director of admissions for our local community. And we have some big, big things planned. So an article uh, hit publicly that we're out 
with our public phase of our capital campaign. So mm -hmm. phase one is an $8 million goal. Um, we actually have secured nearly $6 million in hand right now to uh, innovate, to innovate, build off the legacy of St. Mark's High School, but certainly push St. Mark's forward in a positive direction, mm -hmm. not only for our time here, but when we're long and gone, that St. Mark's is still here, serving the community like it was meant to be. Absolutely, and Rob, it was, you know, after I graduated in 2013, it was a little stagnant and, and idle here for a few years. I, you know, enrollment maybe went down a little bit. Um, you know, rumors going around, what have you. But since you've been here at St. Mark's, and again, these last couple of years, and we've talked about this off the air, there have just been strides made here at St. Mark's High School. Enrollment back up this year. You mentioned uh, the donations and all the, the cool stuff you've got going on renovation-wise and all the money you're raising. Um, just talk a little bit about the f for last few years, you know, from your perspective, being up close and personal, you know, with the you know, increasing everything here at St. Mark's and the improvement that it's had here recently. Yeah, absolutely, Nick. I'd have to take my hat off to uh, my boss, our leader, our fearless mm -hmm. leader, he's resilient, uh, hands down one of the most dynamic Catholic school leaders in the country, uh, President Tom Fertile. Tom came in, he's the one that actually had the meeting with me first to offer me the position here as director of admissions at the alma mater, and I just felt it was the right calling to come back to my alma mater and serve in this unique capacity uh, for St. Mark's High School. I think it's a huge testament to our students and our faculty in creating a culture that is empowering. Um, at the end of the day, I think families want their children happy, they want them uh, supported, they want them challenged, and those are the things that we talk about at the admin table and providing limitless opportunities for the students no matter what your background is, no matter what middle school you came from. Uh, we want to make sure that St. Mark's is offering them an opportunity to become the very best version of themselves. And I think with that buy-in, with that philosophy, uh, from top to bottom, through all of our faculty, our administrators, our students, our families, I think that's why St. Mark's has become the place to be over the last couple years. You know, behind closed doors and all transparency, we laugh because we're just getting started, Nick. Yeah. Uh, we had the pandemic that came in uh, to, on year two there. I think on year three, we had a hybrid schedule. Now we're back in the building here, emerging from the pandemic, God willing. So uh, we're rocking and rolling here at St. Mark's High School, and the spirit is alive and well. It certainly is. 5-0. I know I'm not sure when the last time the Spartans started off a football season 5-0, and but looking good here, obviously, so far this season. And Coach Joey Wright, again, had not having been here that long, but a few years already starting to get things going here. Just from your perspective, you had a chance to be down the sideline for most of the season. Just what have you seen from those guys, those Spartans out on the football field this year? Coach Joey Wright, he does an incredible job. Uh, I think, it, again, it starts from the top, from leadership position. Um, our kids are disciplined. They have the buy-in on the team. Um, you know, they look at everyone as, as brothers. So I think when you have great chemistry on the field and you're working together for a collective vision um, that's bigger than football, mm -hmm. I think that's when boys will really come together on the football field like our boys are doing this year. And you see some good results from that in the end. Um, you know, I know Coach Joe Wright and all of our coaches on the coaching staff, we teach, uh, you know, life lessons that will forever carry these young men through life. So. Uh, a win is great, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure that they're growing, they're developing um, on and off the field to become uh, prosperous young men and, and one day raise a family successfully. Absolutely. That, that is what it's all about. And you mentioned middle school earlier, a special collaboration down. you got some extra cheerleaders I've noticed Absolutely. down on the track here today. Uh, we pointed out a little bit earlier on the broadcast, but talk a little bit about what's going down there uh, with the cheerleaders tonight. You know, my whole motto since coming back to St. Mark's High School in year one was limitless opportunities. We truly and genuinely want to provide an opportunity to every single student, no matter what their likes, goals, aspirations, and interests are. Um, of course, with our cheerleading team, our cheer team has a huge history here at St. Mark's High School and competing and we upped the ante a little bit. A, a unique way that we innovated was actually offering uh, St. Mark's cheerleading scholarships to eighth grade students that are the best of the best in their craft as a way to get them here on campus and provide that opportunity for them. Um, it's been incredible. We actually brought back another alum, an alumna, uh, Coach Dina Utica. She was yes. a stud back in the day as well as her <laughs> husband so it's great having wow. her back as an alma, you know, back at her alma, alma mater here and leading a team forward. The girls in attendance tonight, we, I think believe we have over 20 different middle school students wow. here uh, from anywhere from, I think, the Dover area all the way up to just over the border in Pennsylvania. Wow. So it's incredible to see these young ladies feel the presence of being able to do something that they're passionate about on the big stage. Yeah, and didn't miss a beat down there. They're having a great time doing some, <laughs> great, some great stuff down on the track. We have a preview of it here up in the press box. And another thing that you mentioned here before we got on the air was some new scholarships that you guys have been working on. I know you mentioned a few other things here so far, but what's going on with the scholarships here at St. Mark's and what new things are you guys going to be offering? Yeah, it's a huge testament to our community, right? So um, schools will give out scholarships to allocate 
traditionally from the high school placement test. So mm -hmm. here in our Catholic Diocese of Wilmington, eighth grade students are encouraged by our superintendent, Dr. Lou D'Angelo, to take the test at their first choice school, of course. Mm -hmm. Students do have the opportunity to select a second choice school as well to send test results to. I do know our high school placement test this year is on November 12th or November 13th. Huge opportunity for students to take the exam and be allocated academic scholarships. But when President Fertile and I sat down, we wanted to ensure that we were offering other opportunities for students. Uh, we could just blame it on Mr. DeMacy, like back in the day, maybe not the strongest <laughs> test taker, but we wanted to have other opportunities if you're the best of the best in math, or if you're a science whiz, or if you're a really strong dancer, or a performer, or an artist, or doing some great initiatives in the community service uh, realm of things. We wanted to provide scholarship opportunities for these young men and young ladies um, to not only be awarded for their good things that they're doing out in the community, but also to continue those things here on campus to create a better world, one more pleasing to our God and more helpful to others, which is our, our essentially our mission. So um, there is essentially 16 different scholarships at this point to come to St. Mark's High School. We have doubled annual giving in just two years, two to three years here at St. Mark's. So Big hats off to our alumni base and our constituency for giving back to St. Mark's for allowing the future generation of Spartans to have these opportunities. Our newest uh, scholarship, Nick, is a uh, ice hockey scholarship. So we just started that up. Great opportunity with Coach Mike Zimney um, and just a, another way of innovating and providing an opportunity for our youth. Wow, limitless opportunities here at St. Mark's. That is Rob DeMacy and company. That's what they're preaching, and they are certainly backing that up with so many things going on here at St. Mark's High School. Got my start doing the morning announcements on the air back at St. Mark's as well. And, you know, <laughs> when you know, fast forward, here we are here in 2022. But, Rob, thank you so much for joining me here today. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's generally again, my Again, before I let you go, I'm sure we have a great second half of football coming up around the corner here. But is there anything else you'd like to share with everybody at home, all our viewers, um, while we have you for a second here? No, I just want to give a big special thanks to, to your crew. You guys have oh, do, do an incredible job throughout the state of Delaware. It's something that's obviously very important to our youth in the community, and it's all about uh, creating relationships and developing our youth to become the best version of themselves. So thank you for covering all the great things they're doing. Oh, Rob, thank you so much. Really appreciate you having us here. You guys have been great. Thanks for having us in the press box. Had a phenomenal game. We always love coming out here to the graveyard now, as we call it here at St. Mark's High School. Rob DeMacy, the Director of Admissions here at St. Mark's. Limitless opportunities, so much coming up here in Wilmington for the Spartans. Rob, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure, Nick. Thank you for having me. We're going to take another break. When we come back, second half action right here on Delaware Live Sports. It's Archmere and St. Mark's, two top five teams in Class 2A. We'll be right back after the break. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to, it was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise to Delaware. To date, they operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings in Delaware, Maryland. Also the Stone Balloon and Limestone Barbecue. And let's not forget, Egg Spectation. And five Jersey Mikes throughout Delaware. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. 
our home. Get the assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tri-State area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302-239-HVAC. 302 302- 2-239-4822. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the Villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lewis in the Villages of Five Points open seven days a week. Best happy hour around. See you soon. Melissa Ellis is part of Four Acre Realty Company. She is licensed in both Delaware and Pennsylvania. Melissa knows that being personable and patient is a key to her success as a realtor, helping both buyers and sellers understand current market values and conditions puts them in the best position when making an offer or pricing a home for sale. That kind of high level professional communication and her skill at being a team player put Melissa's clients at ease, knowing she has their best interests at heart. Melissa is also an athlete herself, playing multiple sports so she understands what teamwork means. She is still involved in sports whether it's sponsoring, coaching, or being team mom for her own two daughters teams. What sets her apart is how grateful Melissa is for the trust of her clients. She never takes that trust for granted. She affords all people respect and honesty and works hard to be the support system clients need and deserve. Melissa Ellis, Strong Connections strong service. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials. And welcome back inside Delaware Live Sports. Moments away from kickoff to begin half number two here at the graveyard between the Spartans and the Archmere Ox. The Archmere Ox coming in ranked number five in our ranking. St. Mark's at number three. The Spartans trying to improve and stay undefeated at 6-0. Archmere trying to get off that two-game skid as they start the season 2-0. Fell to 2-2 and last week. But... Looked a lot better than they have in recent weeks in that first half, but St. Mark's able to score 14 unanswered as they head to the locker room. Spartans up 14 to seven after the first. Yeah, it looked like Archmere had St. Mark's right where they wanted them in that first quarter, but St. Mark's came firing back in that second quarter, and they looked like the team that we thought they were coming into this game. And this is gonna be a great second half of football. And we are underway, another squid kick. This one though is gonna sail out of play. So illegal procedure going to set the Aux up with good field position to begin half number two. That squip kick's been working pretty well for them. This time it uh, came back to bite them. So first and 10 from the 35 upcoming for the Archmere Aux. Chris Albero, quite the first half for the quarterback of Archmere. He went five of eight, 64 yards and then the touchdown came on the ground. He's got two carries for 28 and a score. He was the highlight offensively for Archmere in half number one. He's gonna have to be much better in the second half if they have any chance of coming back. In the gun to start this drive on first and 10. They're gonna turn and hand over to Hagenberg who's gonna look for some room to operate and not a big hole for him. And he's gonna be swallowed up after a gain of one. Much of the same of what we saw in that second quarter, this huge St. Mark's defensive line just swallowing up Archmere's running backs, and they're overpowering their offensive line, which is usually a strength of theirs, but doesn't look like it tonight. Ryan Hagenberg now four carries for 19 yards on the night. Justin Hagenberg, one carry for five here for Archmere. Duncan now split out to the bottom of the screen. He had a pretty good first half for Archmere. So second and eight, Albero in the gun. They'll turn, fake the handoff. He'll fire out to the flat, has his man who makes the catch and turns up field. 
and that's going to be Pass is complete number 44, Kieran Udovich. I believe 41. Push out of bounds by number four. Now that is Kieran Udovich, excuse me, who makes the catch. Real nice touch on that throw. First Floated it right over the defender, put it where only his receiver could get down. it. Udovich gets the first down yardage and gets out of bounds. So that's going to be a 10 yard completion to Udovich, his second of the night. Now Bear up to 74 yards through the air. New set of downs for Archmere just inside the 50. Here comes the option. Albero going to look to pitch, able to pitch it there late into the hands of Hagenberg. This time it is Albero the senior, Justin five, Hagenberg. Justin and he'll pick up a few, but once again, Albero making things happen for Archmere. That's going to be a good gain on first down. Yeah, that's speed option. That's a, uh, it's a tough play to master, but Archmere's got the personnel for it. But uh, tell you what, most of the time you're going to see Albero get around that edge, but this St. Mark's defense is just so fast. They're running them down sideline to sideline right now. Second and three now as the Hawks get into St. Mark territory. Ball sitting at the Spartan 46. And once again, Albero in the shotgun. He's going to be next to the senior Justin Hagenberg on second and four. He'll turn, fake the handoff. Once again, Albero throws out wide, has his man Drew Duncan, and he's able to make a defender miss. And now here he goes down the sideline, getting to about the 20 before he's pushed down. And a big play there for Archbeer as they get into the red zone. Nice quick out, nice perfectly placed. Let his man go one-on-one -on -one after the catch. And he gets that. Big yak after that perfect pass right there by Albero. Drew Duncan, three catches for 46 yards. It's the second time we've seen him beat his man after the catch and make his way down the sideline. Again, Duncan, the junior wide receiver, proving tough to be brought down here on the road at the graveyard tonight. 10-24, ticking third quarter action. Spartans up by seven, first and 10 for Albero, Hagenberg in motion. This time they'll give it to Ryan Hagenberg and he's got nowhere to go. Big blow up on the defensive line that time from the Spartans. First contact made by number 87 for St. Marks and that's Luke Decay. Yeah, St. Marks was in the backfield almost right away on that play, overpowering Archmere's offensive line and getting Hagenberg in the backfield. Loss of two for Justin Hagenberg. Three carries, 10 yards for the senior. And now second and 11 for Archmere. Two receivers to the right. It's Duncan. They'll roll out Barrow out of the pocket on second and 12. Has room to throw, he'll fire. Has his man. And then a late flag as Paoli hit him out of bounds. Looked clean from where we were sitting. Certainly did. It was a good hit, but it was with the shoulder in the field of play. So we'll see what the call is there, but the completion looked, to, at least to my eye, Craig, like it was for a little bit maybe more yardage than they have now on the field. And a legal man downfield here against the Archmere Ox, so that's going to negate another play, another completion of positive yardage for Archmere, and they've had str some struggle with some big plays being called back due to penalties. Yeah, they had the big slant down the middle for about 40 yards called back in the first half because of a hold and then this flag for illegal man downfield it was thrown after the play right as the hit actually came on duncan yeah an interesting play there they're going to repeat second down after the call so they will back them up here so archmere had the ball just outside the 20. We're knocking on the door of the red zone. This penalty will back them up a few here. Second and 16. And yeah, these penalties have been biting them all game. We're gonna have to find a way to overcome these mental mistakes. Udovich in at tight end now. He'll be in a three-point stance on the left side of the line. Duncan, the wide receiver out far to the left. They'll turn, fake to Hagenberg. Albero looking for somewhere to go. That ball is loose as he's hit in the backfield. We'll see, and they're going to call it an incomplete pass. So fortunate for Archmere as Albera was able to get rid of it, but that is going to be a close one, Craig, as he was hit hard as that ball came loose. That was certainly very fortunate because from up here, that looked like a fumble. But they're going to call it an incomplete pass on the field. Now we got uh, third and Dewey Beach. <laughs> third and 16 here for the Archmere Ox. Again, it was first and 10 from the 21 just a few moments ago after the big play to Drew Duncan. And penalties, two already out of the last three plays. We talked about it in the first half, not helping out the Ox here tonight. Third and a mile. 
Two receivers to the right side. It's Hagenberg and Duncan. The back is Ryan Hagenberg, and here's the snap to Albero out of the gun. He'll roll to the right. Fire looking for Hagenberg, and that one sails over his head and incomplete. And now fourth and long upcoming for Archmere, and now you're kind of in no man's land, right? You're too close maybe to punt it away. You're sitting at around the inside the 30-yard line. Well, what do you do here if you're Archmere? I feel like on that third down play, you needed to get at least five, six yards to make it a manageable fourth down. Instead, they, they go for it all, and really there was nothing there. It was almost a throwaway. And now they're, uh, they're in a bit of trouble here with fourth and very long, and not in field goal range, but also too close to punt it. Now Barrow completed eight out of his first 11 passes. He's missed on his last two. But here's fourth and 16 for the Hawks. Ryan Hagenberg in the backfield with Albero. Two receivers to the left. They'll fake the handoff. Three receivers going to run around. He has his man. It's Hagenberg down the middle of the field. And that is a touchdown on fourth and 16. Chris Albero to Hagenberg down the middle of the field. And we've got a game here at the graveyard. What a play, but what a broken coverage by St. Mark's. I mean, a great play call by Archmere with that seam route. But that was definitely a busted coverage by St. Mark's to let him get all the way to the end zone. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but nobody was covering him on his way to the end zone. 29-yard touchdown pass from Chris Albero to Ryan Hagenberg. And the freshman is having himself a game tonight. Albero's first touchdown pass. He's got one on the ground, one through the air. He adds the extra point himself. And here we are, Craig, 9-10 remaining in quarter number three. We've got a 14-14 ball game. We talked about them being in no man's land. It's fourth and 16. He can't really punt from where you're sitting at around the 30, 29-yard line. Well, they just turned it into six. Well, I'll tell you what, that was, that was surprising to see. You figure St. Mark's would have thought the, the only play was a long pass, and yet he's able to slip behind the defense and go untouched into the end zone. Big mistake there on the St. Mark's defense. Uh, let's see if that sparks Archmere a little bit. 8 of 13. 9 of 13, 126 yards and a touchdown for Albero. Again, came into the season... Doing it all for Archmere. 871 yards through the air, 183 on the ground, just adding to that John tonight. Marks, that Absolutely, very impressive. But I'll tell you what, St. Mark's defense was fantastic on that entire drive up until that play. Taj Johnson, one of the Spartans, back to receive. This kickoff. From Fenice. Artis is back there as well. And it's a little squib kick. St. Mark was ready for it, though. That ball came out loose, but they're going to say he was down. Archmere wants the fumble, but they're not going to get it as the Spartan was marked down on the return. So St. Mark's going to start this drive near the 35. We'll call it the 33. And we're all tied up at 14. And we've got a very good one here tonight. Pretty much what we expected. Shame you can't go live. <laughs> well, we're hoping that you guys are all enjoying <laughs> this now. Like NFL Rewind, right? You go back, it's like NFL Rewind. So. Exactly. <laughs> 302 Rewind. There you go. We need that. Subscribe now. First and 10 now. Here come the Spartans. So first possession of the second half. That one caught Padalano off guard on the shotgun snap. He was able to corral it after it ricocheted off his hands. He was able to catch it and dive forward for no gain. It's a big drive for St. Mark's here. See how they respond to that touchdown from Archmere that tied the game. See if St. Mark's can take that lead back or is Archmere going to get the ball back to their offense? Keep this push going. Second and 10 after the no gain on first down for St. Mark's. 8.34, clock is ticking here in quarter number three in a battle of two top five teams in class 2A. Slot to the right now, Padalano in the shotgun. He'll take the snap, he'll turn and hand off directly up the middle. This is Donovan Artis. Donovan Artis, the ball carrier for and the He's Spartans. able to get outside the 35 to the 36. These Archmere linebackers in the 4-3, they're creeping up on almost every play. I wonder if St. Mark's gonna see if they can take advantage of that. 
maybe get a tight end seam route right over the middle there. Donahue with a few catches already here tonight for St. Mark's. So third and seven upcoming for the Spartans. First down is at the 43. Two receivers to the right for Patalano, who's back in the shotgun. I believe Keegan Barnes is the tailback. They'll fake it to him. Out of the pocket goes Patalano. He'll set his feet, fire, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Logan Klein up and over for the catch. That was just all height and power right there. That D-back was in perfect position to make the play, but Klein just goes over top of him and pulls the ball. Although it looks like we do have a flag on the field here. This one might be coming back. Well, not a shocker here, Craig. When you see a big play here tonight, you got to look around for the laundry because they're ne getting negated left and right. And we're going to have another one brought back here. Archmere was killed with a few of those earlier. Now St. Mark's turn to get hurt on a big play. I should have known. that's going to back him up. I should have known better. I see a big play, should have looked back, realized there's laundry on the field. I believe it was a holding call against St. Mark's. Correct. So third and 21 here for the Spartans. Again, that first down sitting at the Spartan 43. Clock will now wind at 725 in quarter number three. Now we'll go double slot here to the Spartans. Quick wide receiver screen to Paoli who can't reel it in. And now fourth and a mile upcoming on the incompletion. Not a bad idea by St. Mark's there. Notice in pre-snap that Archmere's D-backs and their safeties were dropping back after that long play. They didn't want to get beat again. St. Mark's tried to take advantage of that by having a little quick wide receiver screen, take advantage of that space that the DBs were giving their wide receivers, but couldn't bring in the ball. And now a flag and illegal high. shift against the Spartans. So back-to-back -back flags on St. Mark's. That one will be declined fourth down now as Luke Decay will head back out onto the field. So Decay out to punt now here for St. Mark's deep in his own territory. He'll take it at the 10. And this is a good kick for Decay. This one's a deep one, high and in the air. Hagenberg doing a good job, just a fair catch that one at the Archmere 31. So that is good for a 60-yard punt, I believe, from Luke Decay. That was a bomb. Doubling up the average on the season. Yeah, he's had a few clunkers tonight, but that was a bomb of a boot all the way down the field. So Chase Patalano back out with, or excuse me, Chris Albero back out in the offense for Archmere. 9 of 13, a buck 26, and a touchdown through the air. Albero also has a 20-yard touchdown carry there in the first quarter. We're all tied up at 14, and now a chance for Archmir to regain the lead here in the third. Big opportunity here for Archmir. Got to take advantage. Duncan's the wide receiver out to the right. Hagenberg in the slot for Albero, who's in the shotgun. He'll roll to the left. Here comes the pressure. Going to hold it and then fire it out late. He'll just throw this one away as he takes a hit from a few Spartan rushers. That time getting to him was T.J. Martin. It's the third or fourth time that they've had a design rollout to Albero's left side. It's tough to do for a right-handed quarterback. Really limits your options. And Albero throwing crossbody. He can throw to the right, to the left. He, he can do it all. And they like to roll him both ways, as you say, Greg. We've seen him go both ways tonight. They've done a great job here recently of getting him out of the pocket. Likes to throw on the run. And now second and 10 after the incompletion, double slot this time for the Alks. They're gonna throw the screen out to Gavin Lee who makes the catch at the 30, but St. Mark's is there, the secondary A to come up and make a play. That's Donovan Artis, the first one to get to him. And Logan Klein there as well. They were all over that play, and even more so, this St. Mark's defense is just so big, they're blowing up the blocks of Archmere, no matter where they are. And just getting in the way more than anything else. Nowhere for this team to run. Able to pick up five on the catch to 
Gavin Lee. That's Gavin Lee's first catch. He had the big one called back on the hold earlier in the ball game. And once again, double slot here on third and a route six. Hagenberg and Lee to the right. Duncan to the top of the screen. Albero fires across the middle. That one almost intercepted. Is It looked as if Albero rushed that throw across the middle. He's used to getting that pressure from the Spartans, and that time maybe heard footsteps in the pocket. Absolutely. Got some happy feet there. Rushed the throw a little bit. There was nobody in the vicinity of where that throw was going. He's lucky that one wasn't picked. So both teams back-to-back -back punts here we should see on the last two possessions here in the third quarter. So here's Cole Finese back out again. Jude Campbell and Mass Paoli back to receive for St. Mark's. They are standing at the 35. Finese gonna boot this one away from the 25. And another good one, perfect spiral and it's a high one. It's gonna take an Archmere bounce, but it will die right at the 35. A 40-yard punt for Cole Finese, and now the St. Mark's offense will head back out onto the field here with 5.42 in the third, and we've got a tie ball game, 14-14. I believe we have a flag on the field as well. No, we don't. No. Who would have thought? Well, let's check down and see what this one's going to be. Require part of our admissions process to determine admission, placement, and academic scholarships. Ensure your eighth grader is registered to take the test at St. Mark's on November 12th or November 13th. For more information, the admissions office will let you know. So they're meeting around the flags. They're going to huddle up and talk about something here. There is a flag on the field. And it's going to be a personal foul. Personal foul against the Oaks. Uh, it's going to be offsetting personal, personal foul. Personal foul against St. Mark's. Those penalties will offset. So maybe you can uh, test that to the chippiness State here in a top five matchup between two teams tied up here in the third quarter. So that's what we'll chalk that up to. But the St. Mark's offense back out onto the field here. Defense did their job. Got the offense the ball back. See what Spartans can do here. St. E's Indian River, that one is final, 39 to 14. Samarina was up 42 to six over St. George's at the half. Oh, looks like they're gonna re-kick. And we will have a re-kick, so we'll negate the punt from Finise. He'll be back there and he'll punt this one away now from the 20. It'll be, he'll back up a little bit. And now just one returner for St. Mark's, I believe that's Jude Campbell, who's sitting at the 40. And that one, what a snag by Finise. And that absolutely saved a huge miscue for the Archmere offense. Cole Finise again, what an athletic play by the linebacker. That was a one-handed snag. He looked like, it was like an Odell Beckham snag in the back of the end zone. He snagged that with one hand, pulled it down, and still got off a great kick. A very impressive and possibly game-saving play by Finise there. It could have been first and goal for the Spartans the other way if that would have gotten by Cole Finise. Again, Nick McGinley is smiling somewhere. But he did get it off, and it was a pretty good one, as Craig mentioned. So first and 10 from the 30 now is where the Spartans will begin this drive. Trips to the top of the screen as Padalano will turn handoff to Keegan Barnes, trying to make something happen. Has a hole and is going to get to the sideline. He'll pick up four to five yards on first down. Nice little scat play to the outside there. Made a few people miss. Got positive yardage. Continuing St. Mark's march forward. They've had a great ground attack since the beginning of the second quarter. Barnes, three carries for 40 yards, and one of them was good for a 29-yard touchdown. So second and six. Upcoming for the Spartans. Ball just inside the 35-yard line. Time winding down in the third, 450. As Padalano sits in the shotgun, he'll turn and give to TJ Martin, who breaks the tackle. He'll try to get to the outside, but he's going to be hustled down. A nice job defensively there from Archmere. In on the tackle was Christopher Al, or should have <laughs> As Chris Alvaro now doing it defensively as well. He does it all. Yeah, no shock there. Tell you what, Martin though. I believe we have an injured Spartan on the field. But Martin, he, 
He's a load to bring down, man. The first tackler has not got him once tonight. It takes a gang to get this kid on the ground. He's he's very impressive runner. Yes, he is. And we are right. Do have a Spartan lineman down on the field, but from the stretching, it looks to be maybe some cramps. Now, you don't like to speculate, but it's looking like it could be a cramp there down onto the field. Again, we don't have the Spartans name for you. When we have it, we will get it to you. But 4.34 o'clock is stopped here in the third quarter. St. Mark's and Archmere tied at 14 in what has been a great game so far. And when talking to both of these teams earlier this week at Buffalo Wild Wings, one of the things that Archmere was stressing was the turnovers. They had turned the ball over so many times these last few games, and it resulted in so many points for the opposing team. They just weren't able to overcome it. And that was one of the emphasis is Chris Albero and Coach Omar Richardson, who we talked to earlier this week. And it just wasn't working out when you turn the ball over that much on kickoffs like they have on kickoff returns. And Taking care of the ball, though, so far tonight. So here's the first down carry. It goes up the middle to TJ Martin, but not before a laundry comes flying onto the field. That one thrown with some velocity from the back judge. And this one going to back up St. Mark's. And here's a holding call against the Spartans. So we're into the third quarter. 4.07 remaining, 14 to 14. First down after the penalty for St. Mark's. There's the play action for Patalano. He'll get out of the pocket to the sideline, and now he'll tuck it and run and able to pick up the yardage he lost on the penalty. A close to a 10 yard gain for the quarterback, Chase Patalano. For a gain of seven yards. And again, we apologize, the clock will not be operational. Here tonight, I'll be giving you some radio calls here, reminding you of the downtime and distance here. 3.54, clock stop for the moment, should wind here in a second. So they get nine back after the penalty on the Patalano carry. And now second and 11 for St. Mark's, first down sitting right at midfield. Big play here for St. Mark's. So second and 11. Double slot here with Patalano out of the shotgun. Here's the snap. He's going to look wide receiver screen. They set it up to Jude Campbell. But once again, we saw it happen to Paoli a few plays ago, just in and out of the hands of the receiver on the wide receiver screens. I'm not quite sure uh, why there was not a roughing the passer called there as Patalano got laid out well after he let go of that ball. But uh, I don't know, maybe since it was an RPO, they gave him a little extra time to hit the quarterback. And, and again, it's, we've seen a fair share of penalties. So, you know, a little surprising <laughs> when, you, when you don't see one on, on one down the field. But third and 11 now for St. Mark's, 348 remaining here in the third. Double slot once again for the Spartans here on third down. He'll take the snap. Looking, here comes the pressure. He's going to step up in the pocket, deliver an absolute dime down the field, and out of the fingertips of Taj Johnson down the sideline. I believe he came out of the slot. And that would, Craig, Panelano put a lot behind it. There is a flag on the play as it was in and out of the fingertips, so that might not matter at all as we wait to hear the penalty call here. Yeah, depending on what this call was, but I'll tell you what, that was almost, holding against St. Mark's. it was holding on St. Mark's. That was almost an absolute dime on what was a broken play as he was scrambling outside the pocket. 
And Alano found a hole, stepped up, made the throw. Johnson did get off his feet. He dived uh, in and out of the fingertips, and wouldn't have mattered anyway. A hold against the Spartans will back or will will the build actually decline the penalty. So now fourth and eleven, and the punt unit on for St. Mark's. Decay had a great one last time. This one, though, goes off the side of his foot and will hop out at the 32. So with 3.30 remaining in quarter number three, we've got a tie ball game. Archmere offense going to head back out onto the field here, and they'll start this drive from their own 30-yard line. Yeah, other than that first drive where Archmere put it in the end zone, a bit of a war of attrition here. So they've had a few three and outs, only maybe two or three first downs between both of these teams since that first drive. The defenses have really been stepping up here. Albero gets the play call back out, hustling onto the field. That was, you know, some things we made light of last year. As Albero always runs to the sideline and gets the play call. You don't see that a lot. Patalano doing the same for St. Mark's. So now double slot formation for Archmere, who will go out of the gun here. And now Albero making some last second adjustments at the line of scrimmage. Here's the snap on first and 10. Here comes the pressure. Albero using the athleticism. Makes a guy miss. We'll get to the sideline before dodging another defender. Now Barrow going to pick up around seven on the carry. Yeah, he got out of there real quick as the pocket collapsed, and he stepped up and realized that was probably his only option. And he made his way towards the sticks. He got about seven yards on that play, bringing up a manageable second down. Three carries, 30 Five yards and a touchdown for Albero tonight. Usually you see him run the ball a little bit more. So the clock stopped now at 321 as Albero went out of bounds. And now double slot here on second and short. Now they'll do the option once again. Albero has Hagenberg behind him. He'll keep it himself, get enough for the first down, and he'll be taken down around the 43. Smart play on that speed option there. He probably could have made the pitch, and they could have got maybe two or three extra yards, but he realized he had that first down right in front of him. Don't risk the ball. Get the first down. Get a new set of downs. And now another player is down. It's another Spartan. And once again, you're seeing that leg being stretched out. Yeah, you can't quite make out who the player is. <laughs> 14 to 14, 310 remaining in quarter number three. I believe that's Luke Watson. who is slow to get up, and he's, well, you love to see that. He's able to get off the field under his own power here. He'll trot off with the help of the training staff, but one of the better players in the state of Delaware. He'll be taking his talents to Temple next season. And he is just, again, a guy you do not want or maybe can't afford to lose if you're St. Mark's, and it's a good thing to see him get to the sideline under his own power. Possibly just a cramp. Yeah, we've seen a few of them. That's what it looked like. First and 10 now. Hagenberg in motion. They'll turn this time hand to Ryan Hagenberg, and he's met right in the hole at the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be brought down for no gain. And in on that tackle for St. Mark's was number 66. Big country, Aiden Zellman. Aiden Zellman, as you hear the announcement behind him, that's big country. And the fans love to hear that here at the graveyard. Gain of one on the ground that time, and that'll set up second and nine. Yeah, there has been absolutely no country for Archmere to run in when it comes up the middle. And I'll tell you what, that St. Mark's defense has just been smothering any runners going up the middle for the Hawks. Second and nine after the gain of one on first down. Albero going to send Hagenberg once again in motion. They'll hand it to him. And he runs right into some more Spartans who blew the Hawks off the line of scrimmage that time. And I believe Paoli was in there on it. And now third and long upcoming for the Archmere Hawks. Yeah, they're doing their best to reestablish that run and try to get something going on the ground so they're not so one-dimensional and predictable. But right now, it's pretty much been Albero scrambling and running and then just through the air. I mean, really, there's been no ground game at all for Archmere outside of Chris Albero. 
coming in, they've averaged 106 rushing yards per game. Did Archmere. Tonight, Albero's got 39, Hagenberg 20, and the other Hagenberg 10. So looking at 80. Second or third and nine. Albero will fake the handoff. He'll put it in the air. Coming back to make the catch is Duncan. He's going to be right at the line to gain. And it's going to be close. And he looks like he has enough for first down yardage. And now we've got some flags flying on the far sideline. Logan Klein looks engaged with somebody on the Archmere side of the field. So we'll wait. But for the moment, it's a gain of 10 and good enough for a first down. As the officials will once again get together and talk this one out with a minute and 13 remaining in quarter number three. I saw some Archmere coaches that did not look very happy over there with their players. This one might have been a bit of talking on that sideline. I could be wrong, we'll see. Let's get the call. It was a very late flag. It's gonna be a personal foul, dead ball personal foul against, against St. Marks. Saint Marks. It'll be first down for the offense. And I, I believe they said 55. That would be Brendan McGuire. He's one of the leaders of the defense for St. Mark's. Yeah, it looked like he was over there talking to Archmere's sideline. Maybe that's what the coaches were so up in arms about and why the flag came out. So that's gonna propel the Hawks 15 yards forward. And now deeper into St. Mark's territory. That's gonna be a good enough, that catch will stand, so 10 yards for Padalano to Duncan. And now out of the gun, it's gonna be a keeper for Albero, who lowers his shoulder into the secondary. He's gonna be close to another new set of downs, close to the 20. And it should be second and very short upcoming for Archmere. Once again, Albero doing it himself on the ground. He's been Archmere's entire rushing attack right now. So second and one is Archmere looking to get into the red zone. A tie game, 14-14, 15 seconds and ticking here in the third, and they are not going to run another play as they will let the clock tick down. We're going to the fourth here at the graveyard, 14-14 to -14 between number five Archmere and number three St. Mark's. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action right here on Delaware Live Sports. And here we go, fourth quarter set to get underway. Nick Alessandrini alongside Craig Laskowski. 14 to 14, Archmere second and one. Looking to get into the red zone here as they are putting a nice drive together. Albero fakes the handoff to Hagenberg, cuts back inside, and he'll have enough for first down yardage. Gain of about three for Albero. Give him three more, and he's up now to 51 yards rushing in a touchdown, and now first and 10 once again for Archmere. As I mentioned, we just began the fourth quarter as Keegan Barnes going to come in defensively, a late substitute for the Spartans. As McGuire, or excuse me, Zellman, big country, going to head off the field here. So first and 10, ball sitting, Craig, right at the 20-yard line. 
Archmere's red zone offense has been pretty successful all game long. Let's see what Belace has dialed up. Now the here's Duncan one-on-one -on -one. once again to the outside. They've loved that matchup. We'll see if Albero goes to him. Here's the play action. He was looking at him, but not going to have enough time. Keegan Barnes freshly into the ball game with a huge sack on Albero. You certainly called it. He was looking his way but couldn't get that pass off as Albero was smothered by Barnes. And again, Duncan has had a lot of success with these one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. Albero has looked his way four or five times. He's got four catches for 57 yards, including some big conversions. And that time they had the matchup they wanted, but the pressure got to him. Once again, Archmere behind the sticks as they make their way into the red zone. Not the direction you want to be going, and you can't be bailed out on fourth and 17 very often. Second and 20 now. Duncan once again spread out wide. Tons Johnson over top of him. The slot receiver is Hagenberg. They'll go Albero. Bootleg to the left, looking to fire. Here comes the pressure, trying to find his receiver, move him down the field. This one he'll just launch straight up in the air. It's a jump ball, and is it going to be brought down? An interception and a touchback in the back of the end zone from Mass Paoli. My goodness, Albero rolling out of the pocket, running to the near sideline, used his hands to kind of point his receiver to the back of the end zone. It did not come off his hands well, Craig. It was a duck in the air, but he did give his receiver, Duncan, a chance. It was double covered. It was a jump ball, and it ended up in the hands of Mass Paoli for the interception. You are 100% right. That was a big mistake by Albero. That, that's just one. It was a dead play. you got to toss that one away. St. Mark's, they're, they're bigger. They're getting these jump balls on offense and defense. That's not one you wanted to throw. Big mistake by Archmere. Let's see if St. Mark's can capitalize. 42 to six, your final with Smyrna. First and 10 for the Spartans after the interception. Padalano in the gun. He'll turn in hand to TJ Martin who goes down before he got to the line of scrimmage. Maybe lost his footing. But also good push up front from that defensive line from Archmere. It's good for a loss of one. Of the 9.48, the clock continues to run. A tie ball game. Padalano going to head into the game alongside a fresh sub here offensively for St. Mark's. That's Daniel Egan, the junior running back. We have yet to see him today, so he'll be up at fullback here ahead of who I believe is Keegan Barnes at tailback. Out of the gun here is Padalano. They'll turn and hand off up the middle to Keegan Barnes. He's got the speed to bounce it outside, but great containment from Archmere, at least for the second, as he's wrapped up after a gain of four. But Keegan Barnes is a threat to take it to the house every time he touches it. And what a job by Archmere to get to the edge, contain him, and make the play. Yeah, they forced him back to the inside when he didn't make it around the corner, and that allowed Archmere's secondary to get in there and make the tackle. Third down and seven coming up for St. Mark's at their own 23 yard line. Need to get to the 30. Mass Paoli, a late run on here for St. Mark's. He'll go trips to the top of the screen. It's Logan Klein, Paoli, and I believe Taj Johnson in the slot. For, Catal for Patalano, they'll set up the wide receiver screen. Paoli unable to reel it in again. The second wide receiver screen that has gone in and out of the hands of Paoli. And now fourth and seven, St. Mark's going to have to send out Luke Decay in the punt unit. That's the second time that they've had the matchup they wanted on the outside. Even had the DBs of Archmere backing up a little bit, so they had the space to make the play. And the wide receiver got a little ahead of himself. He's looking at his blockers before he even had the ball in his hands. So fourth and seven, here comes Decay and the punt team. They'll punt it away here to Archmere. Ryan Hagenberg standing at his own 45 to wait for this one. 8.28 remaining in a tie game here at the graveyard. Decay will boot it away. It's a high one, a pretty good one. It's going to take a hop, fighting the wind, and will bounce out of play at the 44. So Archmere with decent field position to begin this drive and a chance once again to take the lead. We are all tied up at 14. St. Mark's 
Ani has not scored points here in the second half. They led 14 to seven. It all started with an Albero 20 yard touchdown run. 7-0 Archmere. St. Mark's responded with two touchdowns of their own. A touchdown run for Keegan Barnes and then a touchdown pass from Patalano to Jude Campbell. 14-7 at the half and then Albero able to find Hagenberg in the air on fourth and 16 to tie things up in the third and here we are in the fourth. Albero got away with that interception on the last play. Didn't do any damage from St. Mark's, let's see what he does here. Double slot, he'll put it in the air, has his man, that's Gavin Lee who makes the catch at the 48. Look at the speed down the sideline. Gavin Lee, 30, 20, 10, and into the end zone for the go ahead touchdown. Gavin Lee toeing the sideline and in for six. A 43 yard touchdown for Archmere and that's gonna give the Hawks the lead with eight. 05 remaining in the four. And I don't see any flags on the field, shockingly enough. That was an impressive catch and run. Once again, Albero giving the ball to his wide receiver and letting him beat the D-back one-on-one. -on -one. St. Mark's couldn't make the tackle, and he was off to the races. Gavin Lee, his second catch of the day, goes for 43 yards and a touchdown. Two catches, 48, and a score for number 12. And Duncan was upset earlier. He thought he didn't hit the sideline when he went for six as Albero's kick is up and in. 21 to 14, Archmere leads. That time, Lee somehow able to stay inbounds on that far sideline. And again, some of the, the tackling in the secondary for St. Mark's tonight, not able to wrap up some of those receivers. Yeah, Archmere's been trying to take advantage of that all night. Nicky made a great point about on the sideline over here earlier when we, the wide receiver stepped out of bounds. Didn't think he stepped out of bounds, but Obviously, he had at the time. Now we have an almost identical play on the opposite side of the field, but he makes it all the way this time. What an absolutely incredible play. So that one was good for 57 yards. Vehicles parked on the main drive. A black Kia, a Chevy Tahoe, what's the other one? And a GMC Sierra. The cars will need to be moved or be towed. 57 yard touchdown pass and catch from Albero to Gavin Lee. And now Albero is second touchdown pass of the night. And he is up to 248 yards passing and two scores with a pick. He'll kick it off himself now. It's a good one, an absolute laser into the hands of Taz Johnson. Trying to make something happen is Johnson. He'll get to the middle of the field and he'll be brought down just outside the 20. They'll begin this one at the 22. So now a little bit of the pressure on St. Mark's here as the Archmere offense able to strike once again with a big play. Absolutely, right now it's been all Archmere in the second half. St. Mark's is really going to have to make some adjustments here to get through this Archmere defense. They've been three and out in the last few drives and not much doing. Took that, uh, took that Wildcat to get them going in the second quarter. I wonder if maybe they toss in a little wrinkle to get the offense moving here. How about that call, Craig? Guess who's that quarterback? It's TJ Martin, your inner Tony Romo. I Shell try. Here. Here's the motion from O'Donohue. He'll reset in the backfield. Martin this time will hand it off, didn't keep it himself, but nowhere going as he's wrapped up by Kieran Udovich. And Kieran Udovich, again, missing last season with the injury, missed the first two games of this season with the injury, but what an impact he's had since he returned. He's played in two games, 16 tackles, six tackles for loss, and a sack and a half in those two games, and already with a boatload of tackles here tonight in this one. Yeah, it's a shame those bo both those games happen to be losses, but his presence was felt. He was all over the place in those games. Major player for Archmere Academy. Patalano in the shotgun here on second and 10. Jude Campbell is a lone receiver to the bottom of the screen. He's got two to the top. He's gonna look for Campbell, one on one. And that's picked, and that's gonna be taken the other way. Guess who, Chris Albero, pick six. Albero was all over that. You could see him inching up, watching the quarterback's eyes. Patalano telegraphed that throw. Albero jumped it, and he was off to the races. This kid just does it all. 
a pick six for Chris Albero. He now has a touchdown through the air, on the ground, and on defense. Number 16 in white all over the field here tonight at the graveyard. We talked to him on Wednesday, so they had a good, get, good week of practice. They were ready to go. They said, we don't turn the ball over. We are gonna be tough to beat, and that's proving true here tonight. And how about Albero will stay right out there. The extra point is up. And good, and Archmere, 28 to 14, has exploded for 14 unanswered here in the fourth quarter. And they are leading the Spartans here who are a little shell-shocked at five and zero. Oh. And we're hoping to remain undefeated in Chris Albero. Gonna have a word or something to say about that, but plenty of time left here in this one. Still seven minutes to go here at St. Mark's High School. The offense, though, gonna have to get it going. And you mentioned it, Craig, you were perfect on the description. He telegraphed that throw, a little hitch as well, pump faked it once, still stared him down, and then continued to throw. And that was a pick six all the way, as you said. Chris Albero saw that one coming from a mile away. He did, he almost baited him into it. He didn't go for that first pump fake. He wanted him to throw it, because he knew he was going the other way if he actually let it go. And that's exactly what happened. And he took it to the house. Now he's got the old touchdown hat trick. Archmere trying to end a two-game skid with tough losses to Howard and Friends, who are in the top five as well. Five turnovers and four turnovers in those two games, and what just one here tonight. And after the pick six, Archmere up by two scores. Johnson going to field this one at the 15 and nowhere to go. He's tackled it around the 21, so they'll start this drive from where they did on the previous possession, just outside the 20, but this time, Craig, you're down two scores, not one. Yeah, much different situation. You can't matriculate your way down the field for that tying score. Now you got, now the, the clock is your enemy. You gotta worry about two scores to tie this game up. It's a much more difficult situation, but this is certainly not out of the question that St. Mark's can come back. They are a high-powered, Highly talented team. If any team can do it in the state, it's them. 7-0-1 remaining in the fourth. And now the Spartans are going to have to open it up a little bit. They'll go trips to the bottom of the screen. One receiver to the top for Patalano in the shotgun. The running back is TJ Martin. They'll get him on the run here as he rolls outside the pocket. Looking for somewhere to go. Here comes the pressure. Going to have to fire and he'll throw this one away. Looked like they're trying to get it all back in one play there. They sent trip receivers all the way down the field looking for that big strike on first down. And again, St. Mark's that time getting uh, Patalano out of the pocket as we've seen Archmere do with Albero today. So second and 10 now after the incompletion for St. Mark's. They trail by 14 here at home with 6.44 to go. Archmere's defense Campbell. has to be careful here. Again, one safety over the top for Archmere. Campbell, the lone receiver to the bottom. Once again, you got two to the top of the screen. Patalano, straight drop back. He stands in, takes a hit, but gets it up. It's a jump ball, and it's almost intercepted. Logan Klein was double covered there around the 50. And that ball going to be batted down in the secondary. Once again, though, double coverage on some of these receivers deep down the field. And Patalano just trying to give his guy a chance at it, but great coverage on the back end. Yeah, once again, almost like first down. It's like they're trying to get it all back with that one play. But it's not a bad idea. They have the height on these Archmere defensive backs. We've seen them pull it over the top a few times tonight. And again, Patalano, at least to my statistics, has not thrown a completion since the touchdown pass to Jude Campbell. Again, correct me if you think I'm wrong there, Craig, but I've got 0 for 5 on the last five. I believe you are correct. Third and 10 now for Patalano. They'll get it to Barnes on the wide receiver, Flair, and he's got nowhere to go as Archmere all over him in the backfield. Once again, Kieran Udovich right around the ball. And now it's going to be fourth and long for St. Mark's. And we'll see. Uh, you almost have to punt it, but you're down two scores. You almost have to go for it as well. They're going to leave the offense out. Oh, no, they're not. Excuse me. Decay is going to come out and punt this one away. They're going to try and get a turnover here as the clock now winding inside six minutes. 6.02 and ticking. And now we'll have another whistle down on the field. 
And it looks like Coach John Belay is going to come out onto the field. He wants to talk something over here. Timeout. Yeah, you might want to almost watch out for that fake. 5.58, clock stopped here in the fourth quarter. Nick Allison Drini alongside Craig Laskowski. A top five matchup in Class 2A here on this Friday night in Wilmington. A beautiful night for football between number five Archmere and number three St. Mark's. St. Mark's coming into the contest here at home 5-0. and Archmere 2-2. Two and two. They started the season off 2-0 and with some nice wins and then they got to a tougher part of the schedule. Howard who was up there in the rankings, a 38-34 loss. They turned the ball over four times. A tough loss to friends last weekend where they only put up nine points. They turned the ball over five times. Here they are tonight, just one turnover on the Albero interception in the end zone. But Chris Albero looking really good tonight and he's going to have to step up for them to win games of this magnitude and he, he is here at, at the graveyard. He's looking like that stud quarterback that led them to a championship last year. He's protecting the ball outside of the one jump ball interception and he's led them to this 14 point late fourth quarter lead. Hagenberg back to receive at the 45. Decay is set to punt it away. He's standing inside the 10. So another punt deep in St. Mark's territory for the Spartans. Decay gets it up, it's real high again. Gonna hop at the 41, bounce towards midfield and gonna be picked up at around the 47. So Archmere are gonna start this drive in St. Mark's territory with a two touchdown lead. Things are looking good for Archmere here with under six minutes to play. Absolutely, now if you're, you're the Ox, you wanna take care of the ball, you don't wanna take any risks. You want to make sure ball security is paramount, and I'm sure Belace has preached that to his team in the huddle and during that timeout. 100 yards rushing tonight for St. Mark's. They average a buck 50 per game on the season. Unable to get things really going offensively, and especially in the second half. Nothing doing, and again, no points scored for St. Mark's in the second half. They had a 14-7 lead heading into the locker room. Albero back out with the offense here on first and 10. Here comes Hagenberg in motion. They'll give it to him. He gets through the hole, picks up five or four or five there on first down, and the clock right will run. Hagenberg. And notice he was two hands on that ball almost right away, putting his head down, yeah, making sure, get the yardage, get down, keep this clock play. moving, try to seal Second this victory with a four-minute offense. Albero, 51 yards rushing, 248 yards passing. And he is, again, doing a majority of the offensive work here for Archmere. Lamar Jackson has 80% of the Ravens offense. I'm willing to bet Albero has over that here for Archmere. Second that, and six. That's an absolutely perfect comparison. <laughs> he is, this is the Chris Albero show. And on, on cue, he's going to tuck it and run on the belly read. And he's going to be close to first down yardage. Either way, it's going to be a third and short for Archmere. That's where you want to be on third down after the five-yard carry from Chris Albera. Absolutely. They, if they get a first down here, I mean, that's going to take another few minutes off the clock just with another three downs alone. It's going to be tough for St. Mark's to come back unless they can really make the stop here on third down. And we're already seeing Coach Joe Wright take a timeout here with St. Mark's. They're going to start stopping the clock right now. It is third down. If you're able to stop them here, you can maybe force a punt. They could go for it. Again, they're just at around that area inside the St. Mark's 40. So clock is stopped here for the moment at four minutes and 52 seconds. Archmere leading St. Mark's 28 to 14, 21 to 14 before the Chris Albero pick six. That was the big game shifter. I mean, the go ahead touchdown was the big play and then that pick six really putting this one not on ice, but putting Archmere in great shape with under five to play. Third and two for the Alts. Third and two for Archmere. Albero, though, in the shotgun here. Hagenberg sits to his left. They need a yard. Deep motion. They'll turn, hand it to Ryan Hagenberg. He'll follow his brother up the hole. And he's got enough for first down yardage as he leans forward, Craig. A new set of downs, it looks like, coming for Archmere. He just got over the line there for the first down. But that's a big first down. Nearly puts this one on ice. They can take the clock down. Pretty close to the triple zeros. Yeah, St. Mark's needed to get a stop that time. And if they would have, they would have used another timeout. But Hagenberg able to lower his shoulder, propel himself forward, pick up a first down, and 
As you mentioned, Craig, now time is going to run. And, and I believe we didn't have a timeout. Maybe St. Mark's did call the timeout. Oh. Yes, and was. they did, so they used the timeout anyway after the first down gained by St. Mark's called timeout. Yeah. Archmere. St. Mark's called timeout. So that'll stop it for the moment. 441 remaining here at St. Mark's High School between Archmere and St. Mark's. And Archmere needed this one. Dropping two in a row. Coming off a season last year, Craig, where you go 10 and 0, you don't even get to experience a loss at all in 2021. They win two games, 12 games in a row for Archmere at that point, and then you suffer two losses. You know how you get, sometimes you don't know how to handle when you lose twice like that. And after going having a season like they did last year, what a response from them tonight! It had certainly been a while since they tasted defeat, and they don't want to taste it again. They've looked Justin good Hengberg, here. And you can point it at what they did well, but you just got to focus on Chris Albero. It all starts with 16. I mean, the kicking game, the passing game, the rushing game. He's their, he leads them in carries and rush yards as well. And he's right on brand tonight. Seven carries, 56 yards, and a touchdown. Absolutely. Like we said, it's been the Chris Albero show. And, you know, I was talking to Jason Winchell, our producer, before the game. and. He said that uh, Albero during practice this week was really intense. They were really focusing on their fundamentals and they were not happy with all the turnovers in the last two losses. And Albero was really getting on his teammates, making sure they were focused at practice. And I'll tell you what, it has certainly showed here today. There's a, a new ferocity with this Archmere team getting back on track with this, um, well, what looks to be a victory tonight. 11 of 19, 248 yards and two touchdowns and one interception for Chris Albero. We mentioned the rushing stats. Gavin Lee, a big touchdown catch, a 57-yarder that put them ahead. And then Albero reading Patalano's eyes, picking off the comeback route deep in St. Mark's territory, taking it 23 yards to the house. So second and 10, Albero and company back out onto the field after the timeout. This time he'll fake the handoff, try to get outside, but he ran right into Luke Watson, who's going to pick up another tackle for loss to add to his stat sheet. Yeah, great play by St. Mark's getting to the backfield. Make sure Albero goes down behind the sticks. Gives them a little bit of life with a third down here. So third and about 14 for Albero and Archmere. And he does it all. I mean, a truly incredible game for him. Kieran Udovich was spectacular defensively for Archmere. He will probably also be driving the bus, valeting cars. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, what a performance. Third and long now for the Hawks. This time he'll fake the pitch and keep it himself. Get those rushing yards he lost back and then some. For Albero, give him six yards on that carry. So fourth and nine upcoming for Archmere. As Albero is up to 61 yards and a score on nine carries. And again, the only mistake you can even point out in his game, if you want to call it a mistake, was when he was rolling cross body and threw that interception the, up in the back of the end zone. And even then, he's given his guy a shot to make a play on it. He was double covered, which was the issue. But he has been lights out here for Archmere tonight. And we'll see maybe if they choose to punt this one away as Jude Campbell is back deep for the Spartans. Yeah, might just want to do a little pooch kick. And they're just letting the clock run here, Craig. 2.49 as it continues to tick away. And St. Mark's most likely out of timeouts here. As Archmere will Archmere probably will call it. one, yeah. So that'll stop it at two minutes and 48 seconds. And or actually, they're not even gonna stop it. They'll take the delay of game and back it up five, and they are content with where they are. Yeah, it gives them a little more uh, room to play with on the punt. See if they can pin them deep, finish this game off. So Fadis back out to punt for Archmere. He's had some good ones, so has Decay tonight. They've both been pretty active, and this is a perfect spiral deep up in the air. It's going to hop into the end zone. 
or oh, coffin corner. Did he corner it at the 10? Looks like the ref is around the 12 yard line, I believe. Now was he marking it there? I thought he was at first. Either way, the uh, Spartans offense will get back out onto the field, a chance to you know clean some things up here, trailing 28 to 14, 241. Would be hard to come back, not impossible. Not looking good if you're a Spartan fan. Archmere leading by two scores. But 241, not a lot of timeouts. Let's see if he gets a big place here, maybe try an onside kick. Stranger things have certainly <laughs> happened. How about the Phillies today in the ninth? I was just about <laughs> to say that. I mean, Phil's putting up six in the ninth. Epic meltdown by the cards. You never know. He'll look to throw here. And now he's going to find an Archmere Hawk. And guess who? Chris Albera with interception number two. And that's going to all but wrap Madison things up here at the Chris graveyard. Albero. The Archmere Hawks, after dropping two tough ones in a row, come into the graveyard and take down the undefeated St. Mark Spartans here on the road. Chris Albero, interception number two. I was going to ask you for your player of the game, Craig, but I think it's self-explanatory I don't even think we need to go over that. I mean, and how appropriate is it that Albero gets the pick right there at the end of the game, over the shoulder, great catch to ice this game for Archmere. He was Superman tonight. He was their offense. He was their defense. He was kicking for special teams. I mean, he really does it all. We've... We've said it over and over again. We're a broken record here, but it's just it can't be said enough how special this talent is. And they'll hand it up to Gunter Hagenberg. This is Ryan, the freshman on first down, and this will just tick the clock away. 221 and ticking. Second and 10. Here at St. Mark's. Let's get to some scores from around the state here tonight. Dover stops Apo on downs. And they, they have a 27 to 14 lead, 732 remaining in that one. Cape and Delmar trading hits back and forth. Cape on top, 28 to 14 left in the third. That from Devin Martin. And uh, Marty here putting some scores up from St. Mark's. He must be uh, in the crowd somewhere. Marty Sheehan from Delaware High School Football Podcast. As this time they go back to Justin Agenberg. Ryan He'll pick Hagenberg up a few. Tackle by number 75, Luke Watson. Brings up third and seven for the Aws. Malvern prep up 17 to nothing Smart over territory. DMA. <laughs> Samarna beats St. George's 42 to six. And you know, I just realized, Craig, by the time they're watching this, they will have already known this for us. <laughs> You know, so I, wasting I, my time here, you know? I, I never thought of that, but who knows? There, there's people who could be coming <laughs> I mean, home maybe, late from maybe work. Maybe we're live and don't know it. Marty is uh, commenting on it, so if he's here maybe, or he's just watching at home. Um, never know. Third and six for Archmere. Clock continues to wind as we hit under a minute. Here left in this one. Hagenberg will get it after going in motion, and he'll break through, and he may take this one for six. He's just going to go down. How about that play? The old Shady McCoy. The old, here you go. And again, his uh, fantasy managers won't be happy about that one. But Hagenberg with a breakout run through the middle, got through the hole, and the smart play to go down, let that clock run, and the Archmere is going to head out of here with a victory. Yeah, Brian Westbrook made that famous for the Eagles years ago. Shady did it again about 10 years back. That is the smart play. You break into the open, just go down. Doesn't matter if you go up by 21. You never know what can happen, as was on display with the Bills earlier this year. So that was close to a gain of 30. We'll call it 28. I'm sorry, the Browns earlier this year, not the Bills. My mistake. That's right, Nick Chubb. If only he wouldn't have got in. Exactly. For touchdown number three. Didn't even need the third one. But that is going to do it as the clock will hit zeros here at the graveyard. Archmere comes on the road and not only hands St. Mark's their first loss of the season, but ends their two-game skid as well. And again, we talked about the parity in Class 2A all season long, Craig, and we know nothing more now than we did before as Archmere five takes down St. Mark's who was undefeated. It is a, it is going to be wide open in Class 2A today. There are a lot of good teams and we had a chance to check out two of them here tonight. Absolutely, these were two great teams. We knew it was gonna be a close game and it really was all the way through. They may, Archmere may have won by two touchdowns, but it was certainly a closer game than that. They took over kind of in the second half 
But I'll tell you what, like you said, there's going to be parity throughout this state all the way till the end. Now, St. Mark's the undefeated team with one loss. Archmere with two losses, but a big win over St. Mark's. These, these rankings are going to be tough to, tough to go by all year long here. It is. It is going to be a fantastic playoff race when we get to that point. Archmere 28 to 14 over St. Mark's. Get you some stats now before we head off the air. Chris Albera, 11 of 19, 248 yards, two touchdowns, and that interception. He threw one, but he had two himself in the secondary. So he comes out one up in that ratio on interceptions. Rushing the ball, he had nine carries for 61 yards, a touchdown on the ground as well. Was doing it all. He is our first year orthopedics game of the week, player of the game. But Archmere, they talked about overcoming adversity. They faced adversity the last two weeks. They turned the ball over. They weren't able to find a rhythm offensively. They got back to it hard to practice this week. We talked to them about it on Wednesday, and they came out and played a really good game. They score first, and then not only that, they go down at the half, and then they come back to win the game. Fundamentals and perseverance for the Archmere Hawks this week. It's a big win, big win for Archmere. I'll tell you what, like you said, this is going to be a fun rest of this football season. <laughs> it absolutely is. Again, St. Mark's falls to 5-1. and one. Archmere improves to 3-2. and two. And you will see both of these teams down the road. I am sure of that. So for Nick Allison, Drini, Craig Laskowski, Mike Lang, and Jason Winchell from the graveyard, the press box here at St. Mark's High School. Archmere gets the win on the road, 28-14 to 14 over the Spartans. We will see you Wednesday for, for Delaware Live Sports Weekly at Buffalo Wild Wigs.